So, quick overview again, just for where you've been. So, um, you dealt with the Goblin Queen at the Pot of Gold Tavern. Um, so last week, what you did was, um, first of all, you all helped Lyle get set back up again. Um, Torrin and Tex, you both helped build a forge outside. It was like an Ikea kit pack. Um, yes, it was a forge. Yep. <laughs> that was weird. <laughs> I, love I don't my know how forges so. are built. <laughs> <laughs> um, River, you helped him with his sign and then went up to have a little look at you. Mika, you went off and found your little friend Olivia in the woods who gave you a little bit of sass and um, accepted your apology. And Leaf, Ooh. you for some reason decided to spy on everyone. Um, yep. <clears throat> then climbed up the tree and made a painting. It was like a very, very crude, like primary Absurd. school, nursery kind of drawing of the view. <laughs> and then somehow managed to avoid every single branch on the way back down and stuck a three <laughs> point landing. Um, so then after that, you all headed off towards Elands, um, where you encountered the halfling um, Ida, uh, sorry, Aza, and two humans who were with her. Um, they'd been attacked in the night and their horses were startled and they ran off. Went mm -hmm. off to try and find the horses. Um, Leaf managed to get one of them, um, and you managed to get the other one. Get go back to them there, um, and then travelled with them towards the city. Um, when you arrived at the city, um, <clears throat> there was big swaths of cloth being hung between rooftops, um, kind of in an attempt to kind of block out the sun. But um, it went from red to orange to yellow to green to blue to purple, um, and just kept rotating in those colours. Um, well, the shops were kind of shut for the night, so you decided to um, post up at the Singing, Dra Singing Dragon Tavern for the evening, which when you entered, there was a drag show going on. Um, after doing a little bit of looking around, doing a little bit of stealing for River, um, Leaf and River made a deal <laughs> where if um, Leaf could steal something from um, a mark um, without being found out, then River would down a shot of vodka. Um, Leaf made best friends with a group of elves in the corner. Um, managed to steal a coin pouch um, from them and get back without being noticed. So River had to down the, the shot of vodka. After that, you kind of ended your night, went off into your rooms. Leaf left the door open um, in case anyone wanted to join them. Um, <coughs> And then head off for a day of shopping the next day um, where you visited the common room as well as Xanthia's um, tinctures and tonics. Um, so you managed to procure a map of the city of Elans as well as some new clothes for Tex and um, some potions as well from Xanthia's. Um, thrown in there a little bit as well was a little bit of stealing of street meat. Um, and that's where we ended for the session. <laughs> Quality D and D content, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Only the best. Please. <clears throat> all right. So you're all still kind of in the um, main square area with the temple, which was dedicated to Una, um, who is the goddess of law and justice. Um, <laughs> and you've just walked out of Xanthia's after procuring your street meat. Um, so where would you like to go, and what would you like to do now? Uh, we have to head toward Pandora's, right? Yeah. yeah. Pandora, Pandora's, yeah. yep. Okay. So and that's an old me, town. Yeah, let me just bring up the map for where Pandora's was. Um, I'm pull up my little notes here for Pandora's. Because of course <laughs> I have like everything. So Pandora's is... Yeah, Pandora's was kind of like way back to um, where you were kind of entering the city and um, along the path that you came into. Um, so it's not too far from the square that you're at, it's maybe about a 15 minute walk. <clears throat> yeah. And what time of day is it again? I've forgotten. Um, it's a little bit of, um, past noon, so maybe about one o'clock. It's kind of like lunchtime kind of time there. Um, you left the tavern about 10 o'clock in the morning after getting some breakfast and getting up for the day. Um, Spent a little bit of time walking about and um, going to the going to the other shops as well. So I'm going towards Pandora's. Okay. So um walking over there, it's a really hot day. Um same same as what it was the previous day for y'all. Um 
you're happy for having the shade from the canopies coming down um, because without that you imagine you would all be sunburned within the space of five minutes um, just because of how hot it is and um, especially with being close to the water as well the sun seems to be a lot brighter there as well um, there's through the um, the gaps are little um, rays of light that come down um, casting the overall kind of shaded areas um, and all these different colours from it coming through but then are just these little tiny beams of sunlight um, that kind of sparkle I guess um, causes the, the stonework of the, the path that you're on to, to kind of sparkle a bit. So after walking up for about 10-15 minutes towards Pandora's you um, come across a, a little store um, it's kind of in Tudor style again, all uh, all the storefronts and all the houses are kind of in the Tudor style with the, the wooden beams I mean, and like the white plaster work. Um, it's got a, a set of double doors and a nice big like bay window going into it and a sign up um, on top of it in green writing that says Pandora's Box. So you walk in and a little bell dinglings um, above as you walk in and you see, um, where's my descriptions? I wrote them out last night. <clears throat> so the first um, person that you encounter is a half elf um, behind the counter um, sitting on a stool with her boots up on the table, on, on the counter there, um, with a book that she's reading. Um, she's got tan skin with um, emerald green eyes. Um, she's got dark brown hair that's kind of cut to shoulder length with an undercut on both sides so it's made to kind of look like a mohawk going back the way. Um, one thing you do notice about her though that's really distinctive straight off the bat is she's got two tattoos like on her head where the undercut is. So on one side she's got a raven and on the other side is um, a mixture of like thorny red roses and other flowers and vines that go down and you can kind of see it continuing down her arm onto her fingers. Um, <coughs> She's dressed, uh, or they're uh, sorry, dressed in a, a green collared shirt um, and like dark trousers and kind of lace up boots that are black and kind of go to mid calf. Um, she's got an eye bracelet um, and um, a piercing that's not quite a normal piercing. It almost looks like a stretcher, but it's a dragon claw that's put through it. Mm -hmm. She kind of looks up and nods a little bit, and then returns to her book. Mm. Who needs what? Uh, <laughs> still a quest for healing potions, isn't it? See yeah. If you, see if there's a better price here. Yeah. Uh, so I can walk up to her and say, uh, Good afternoon! How are you doing? Looks up from her book again, kind of closes it over and sits it off to the side and then like kind of like pulls her feet down from the counter and goes, Sup. How can I help? <laughs> Sup. Sup. What have you got to sell? Anything magic? Anything that you need enchanted, created, um, got weapons, armor, um, spells, um wands, pretty much anything that you would need for any magical needs. She's kind of like nodding away like this. Excellent. Well, I think we have some purchases we need to make. Uh, we're just going to take a minute to talk about that and we'll get back to you. No worries. Take your time. And she kind of like stands up from the stool and goes off to this little door that's on the back wall, which you can kind of see it's um, designed a little bit different from the Tudor interior. Um, from the rest of the um, the store, um, the store itself it does follow the Tudor ex exterior, but on this back wall you do see um, <clears throat> it's got like a wooden herringbone pattern, so it just kind of goes up and down like that, um, and it's like a really nice contrast to the floor, which is like a, a kind of um, like grey flagstone floor, um, and in the mm. corner you can see even though it's not needed this time of year. There is a um, fireplace just kind of at a diagonal in the corner as well, um, even though it's not needed this time of year. Um, she goes off to behind a door that's on the herringbone wall. Um, she's back there for a little second and then comes out with um, <coughs> a green tiefling 
um, who's got like dark green fleckles um, across the nose, um, silver eyes with no pupils, um, and his black curly hair it kind of um, goes between the horns, um, which kind of um, curve down like this. Um, and there's like no hair between the horns and the ears and right the way around the back and is covered in piercings as well. And they both like just kind of <laughs> start start like whispering off in the corner as they come out. I'm uh, gonna look around for um for uh, arrows for my short bow. See okay. if they have anything or a short bow like any kind of weapons like that. Okay. Um make an investigation check. See if you can see any. Fifteen. Okay. Um, so looking around, you see there's like the the shelf there that you pointed out um, with the weapons racks on them. Um, <clears throat> you also see um, there's just a couple of three shelves in the middle there um, that's got like just random magical items on it, um, like candles and staffs and things like that, um, and paper. Um, looking over at the armour, you don't really see anything on that wall either. Um, kind of get a sense that for bolts for crossbows, um, you'd, you'd have to go to like a blacksmith or something like that to get them. Well, I have a, uh, I need two, I need arrows because it's a short arrows. bow. So. Um, for that there, let me see. Um, or for short bow, you don't really see any arrows. Um, you kind of get that this is for um, enchanted weapons. That they mostly just deal with um, weapons that be enchanted. Um, you see this Does anyone um, <coughs> want to try to um, see if they can get a, a potion? Some potions? Did we not get some healing ones from before? No, we didn't because we wanted no, we to come did. here. No, we did. Oh, we did you get got, them. Oh, we got, you we got, got three, three, three healing potions. Basic, basic potions. <laughs> we were going to just check to see what the if what they had. Right. That's right. So I'm going to look at uh, the arrows as well because I've got uh, you know from my there crossbow. Aren't there. there aren't arrows. Oh shit. No. Yeah, we'll have to go somewhere else to get arrows. Yeah. Weapons here. We have to go Crackers. To blacksmith to get arrows. So I just I'm go to the no. Shopkeepers and just mm -hmm. say, um, so we are wondering exactly what you had in po as far as potions. Um, anything that might maybe help against goblins. Okay, um, you see the uh, tiefling. My name is River. <laughs> um, you see um, the tiefling just kind of wave like awkwardly and um, like Pandora. Um, this is my or our store. Um, and then um, the one beside the was I met. Um, it's a lot more outgoing. Um, puts a hand forward to shake your hand. Um, and they instantly um, kind of go off to round the corner of the counter there and start rummaging about underneath. And they pull out um, two potions and stick them on top. Um, these are the only ones we have just now. Um, Two basic ones, that's all we have. Anything other and than that? And how much? Um, they are 50 gold each. <clears throat> Does anyone need any, like, armor or anything? Do you guys have, do you have, um, do you have anything, uh, magical weapons or armor or anything that might help us in our, uh, adventures? Anything interesting? Different? Um, you see the tiefling kind of look um, after Mets looks at them, and Pandora looks at, well, Mets looks at Pandora, sorry. Um, and they kind of go over to the, to join Mets and um, look up at the wall on this wall. You can kind of see there are a few like kind of special items, like kind of not, not on sale, but um, like they're recommended items. Um, they say, got plus one sword here, um, just a, a two-handed great sword, um, kind of pull that down and stick it on the counter, and looking up there again, pull down another one, um, another item, 
Um, you can see like this backpack. Um, it's just like a plain leather backpack. You stick that down. Got a bag of holding. Um, and then you kind of look underneath as well. Um, and it's, uh, you kind of see that there's a glass top to the counter and you can kind of see amulets and rings and things like that inside of it. Um, and they pull out um, a ring and say, got this ring of evasion as well. These are kind of the the main ones that people come in here for, really. These three items. And she like kind of you don't nods and interested in anything. Walks back into you don't the to anything in the way of a shield, do you? She um, kind of pops her head back as she's like walking backwards to go into the like door that they came out of. It's like someone just bought the shield last week. Um, can make another, but it'll take me a little while. Take maybe a week for me to get one. Mm. How much um, would the bag of holding be? Um, mates is still over at that side, the half elf. Um, kind of pull out a, a ledger book and start rummaging through. Um, a billion dollars, right? No, not quite a billion. Um, but they, they can, like, kind of pull out, I guess, a little note card. Um, I'll just use one of these. Um, and they're looking at it. Bag of holding, 4,000 gold. Woo, woo. Wow. Too rich for my blood. <laughs> Too rich just now. No, 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 I kind no, of counter no, no. you, um, like with a little wink. Mm -hmm. Um, Ooh. do you happen to have incense? Incense, yes, I do have incense. Um, they kind of come round. They pull up. Um, you know how those that kind of bar shelf things that go down to stop people from going behind counters and it kind of pull that up and kind of come out from behind the counter and um, they go off to one of the shelves that are kind of in the middle of the room and they start rummaging about let me see I'll check the price of it um how much are you looking for um they're kind of just want to see what your price is per block <laughs> okay let me see where's all the Got to love pulling out the book and not knowing where anything is. Incense, incense, incense. It's not there. I might need to just do a Google search. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just good for right now. Or we can, you know, I can, I can come back another time. Or we can search. They kind of like hold their hand up. Um, I was like, I'll, I'll double check in the storeroom. And they kind of go back into the storeroom, um, which is the door that you saw them coming out of. Um, let me see. Um, I Yo. do have it in another document, but that document's not on my iPad. Um, where is the price of it? Block of incense. Ooh. Have you found it for me? Uh, bundle sun. Wait. Where am I? Typically found in a priest pack. Incense. Um, it doesn't have the amount of gold on D&D Beyond. There, <laughs> they they kind of come back out um, from the storeroom. They've got like, um, this box, this black box um, that they bring out and they stick it down on the counter. Um, Pair, per block of like regular incense. Um, it's one silver piece. Um, if you're looking for something that's a bit more upmarket, and um, they kind of like roll their eyes at that. Um, you're looking at <laughs> ten gold pieces. Oof. Um, I'll just take uh, two blocks of the the basic okay. incense. And they pull out two two blocks of incense, and that'll be two silver pieces for that. Okay. So. You look like you know, might know what, you know, interesting in this town. Interesting. <laughs> in terms anything of interesting going on? Anything, uh... Oh, okay, that interesting. I thought you were meaning places to go. Um, we kind of, like, I mean, laugh a little too. bit. You know, you, you look like you would, you look like you would know. Kind of, like, nods, like, appreciatively, like, I know what's up. Um... <laughs> in terms of 
things that are weird, you could say. Um, Poppy did say that her supplier got robbed. Um, so that's the from where is the note of the store name? This is why I need to organize all this better. <laughs> <laughs> Where is it? Are you here? You are here. Was very mysterious. Um, There's a long pause. There's this poppy over at um, Poppy's right. Perfect Petals. Oh wow, nice and delicate. Um, she did say that <laughs> her supplier got robbed and they took some of the, the flowers, which was weird. Um, so that's really the only weird thing going on just now. In terms of places to go, well. There's a poetry night tonight at the Ooh. the Singing Dragon, an open mic poetry night. That that's usually quite good. Um, Who doesn't like poetry? It's really the only <laughs> bar that we go to. Really, is the Singing Dragon. It's the best one around, anyway. Yeah, we went, we we ended up there. Oh, you you went there already? So, so you know you know how how varied it is. Well, this is happening because mm -hmm. River's getting a little antsy. Yep. Um, I would like to make a perception check to see if there's anything that I can steal. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> Get in the edge. Get in the edge. Okay. Um, make one with advantage because Metz is kind of preoccupied talking to text just now. So make, make a, a perception check there with advantage. Eleven. Eleven. Eight, nine, okay. 11. Yeah, um, 11. Looking around on the shelves, the shelves are like kind of, um, they're not quite like up to head height. Um, kind of get this so that people standing behind the counter can kind of see the entire shop and see everyone in the shop at the same time. Um, you see kind of regular kind of stuff that you would find in a shop, like you see some candles, um, some pouches, oh, right, right. some components pouches. Um, you just see like a a variety of various different things that you would find in a in a store. Like you see a couple of um, like crystal orbs sitting off on one shelf. All right, I'll try to steal one of those. Okay. <laughs> why? Um, why? Do, can can we see her stealing these? Make a perception. Can you make a, a, a stealth check? While stealth. River, while no. River is doing this, yeah, I am continuing my conversation because I think this shopkeeper is cute as fuck. So. <laughs> oh gosh. Uh, so that's a perception check of 19. Okay. Yeah. So mine was also 19 with a plus 9. <laughs> okay, okay. Ooh. So. Yeah. You have no idea what River's doing. Um, you just see oh, River kind of God. looking around and you get distracted a little. Or not not distracted. Um, you're kind of taken up with the conversation that's going on. Okay, cool. Um, so should I do a sleight of hand? Yeah. Do you want me to roll another um, Yeah, roll a, roll a sleight of hand check. <laughs> Nineteen. Nineteen. Oh okay. gosh. Um, it's easy enough to kind of just walk by um, the shelf that's kind of um, away, like kind of is the back side of the shelf, as it were, and just easily pick it up. And as you're moving along, almost as if you're like carting okay. your way through all the items that are on the shelf, looking for something. So it's easy enough. Also, to is there anyone there. else besides us in the shop? No. There, there's, besides them there's, and us. It was just the five of you plus um, Mitt and Pandora. Um, Pandora's a way back oh. into the, um, oh, no. the kind of like, oh, no. storeroom. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Can you guys, we can go free for all. Let's just steal everything. Everything. Quick roll. Yeah, yeah, that's shiny. Oh, no, uh, uh, making out with the shopkeeper. Oh, no. <laughs> A seventeen. What could I steal? <laughs> what would you like to steal? Can I just say that, like, my sleight of hand and stealth are excellent. Everything else sucks. <laughs> oh, wait, sleight of hand. oh, actually, that was a nine. Uh, what did I steal before? Seventeen. 17. Oh, 
19, actually. Okay. I have plus two for my slate okay. event. Um, so, See? So, so I uh, stole the orb, and then I'm going to head outside and just kind of chill. Okay, so heading outside with the orb, you kind of hear, like, an alarm going off. Yeah, oh, wait, um, sorry. When you open the door. That's why I asked. Now I remember. Hold on. I asked you if there were other people in the store. Yep. Sorry, Besides, cooking as well. Yep. That's what I was doing next. Thing. Yeah. So there was, um, it was just the five of you, plus mates who's still behind the counter talking to Tix, and Pandora um, has went away back into what you can only assume is like a storeroom kind of area. Alright, so I'm going to take the orb, mm-hmm. and I'll put it back. Okay, putting it back um, <laughs> after walking around a little bit, um, do it easily enough, um, even if mates had kind of looked up, they just kind of assume that you're just putting something back that you're maybe thinking about buying. And then I'm going to walk outside. <laughs> okay. And then, yeah. So walking outside... So I just- um, it's easy enough just to walk outside there and just stand by yourself looking at everybody going past. <laughs> With my hood up. Okay. So, so suspicious. <laughs> don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. <laughs> don't be suspicious. <laughs> don't be suspicious. <laughs> I'm just, you know. Yep. <laughs> yep. Okay. So, I'd like to talk to Pandora. Um, and I'd like to ask her... Um, you know that that we've heard about goblin goblins attacking and uh, and stealing flowers and just wondering, you know, and trying to figure out what the possible cause could be. Maybe what type of flowers, if she knows what type of flowers are being stolen. Mm-hmm. Is it specific flowers? So, so Pandora's in the back room. Um, so saying to mates that you'd like to to kind of find out a little bit more. Mates goes back. Um brings Pandora out. Pandora now has um, big black gloves on that kind of go like to halfway up her arm. Um, so you kind of guess that she was in there um, doing some work and um, doing some enchanting and whatnot and some tinkering. Um, pulls like, uh, had these goggles and they're kind of just sitting up on top of her head like kind of like going a little bit like around the horns. Um, and they come out um, asking them both um, you get you get the idea that mates is kind of the the talker of the two um but mates kind of has their arm like around pandora and they're kind of like standing together um (laughs) and uh, mates um and says um i think they were was there the black lilies i have no idea Hmm. Well, we can't have I black think... lilies because River will die from them, so we can't have them. I think Harry said they were... It was lilies of some kind, I think, that Harry said they were. Because we all know lilies kill cats, so... <laughs> Good point. Only, only if I think River is smart enough not to eat them. Yeah. So, well, even though they would kill me, so... <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um... Nice. What's your name, Max? But I'm putting it in my notes. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. You kind of yeah. see like Pandora no. and mates kind of whispering a little bit. Um, and Pandora's like, we should get lunch soon. Lunch? And then you kind of see mates nodding and then Pandora kind of goes over at the um, at the counter. It doesn't go quite all the way along to like the wall that's got the, um, the armour on it. Um... It's got like a kind of like square bit that kind of just comes out and there's a door that goes in um, and they kind of just go into that so it's a different door than the one that they came through originally like you, that you imagine from the store area. Mm-hmm. And Mitzi's just left downstairs with y'all. Uh, so I have another question. I have another question. Since or, she's still there. For Pandora? Or for mates? For mates. For mates, okay. Since you two uh, create potions, do you know if lilies are used in any particular type of potion? Well, we don't do potions as much. It's more That's more so Xanthia's domain. Um, Pandora really just does the enchantments. Um, 
and okay. I deal with procurement of like all the other like kind of magical items. Um, for that, you would need to speak more so with Xanthia. Um, but okay. Poppy mostly just sells flowers to um, the kind of higher ups in the society. Um, <coughs> she's one of the main providers for for the castles. But don't tell her I told you that because it's kind of on the down low. Nobody really oh. is supposed to know that. Absolutely. It's we'll between you and I. Yeah. Um, I appreciate the information. It's really helpful. No worries. I'm trying to find out maybe we can we can help solve this problem in the town. We'd like to do that. Well, I'm outside. Can mm -hmm. I look for like a guard or uh, somebody that's like clearly in charge? Like, you know. Okay. Uh, um, on this officer. street, um, there are there are um, it's a main kind of thoroughfare road um into the city, so you, there's a lot of people kind of milling about. Um, a lot of tradespeople, a lot of people just going about shopping and things like that. Um. On the main road, has got like a kind of pathway on each side. Um, the road itself is just big enough for a cart to go by. Um, there are the guards just up at the gate where you came in from the previous day. There were four guards there, um, two on each side. Um, and there was, as you were coming up to go into this road, um, from like a temple square as it were, um, there was a guard stationed on each side there as well. Um, mm -hmm. That's it. I just want to know if there are any. I'll wait for everyone to come out. Okay. I go ahead and exit the store. Me too. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to exit the store. So, so Mets is still like, kind of standing there with like the two potions just on the counter. Um, like, hands <laughs> 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 going, going, going like this, like, you know, like a kind of gesture's like, what the hell? Aww. I turn around before we leave. Okay. Thank you very much for your your help we might be back for those potions later but um appreciate everything okay. and I'll <laughs> um kind of waves and says might see you tonight the singing dragon then and then kind of like put the the potions back underneath <laughs> so do you all um, exit the store then um rivers outside just waiting like kind of um back against the wall um just kind of watching and keeping so, an eye out on everybody so i've been thinking if we want to uh, actually be helpful in solving this problem we might want to talk to someone who's actually in charge and might be able to compensate us for dealing with this problem i had the same thought <laughs> yeah um and i know that some of us i'm i'm just no judgment but i'm guessing some of us feel more comfortable speaking with folks in authority than others oh i'm fine yeah, I'm, I am as well, um, but I don't want to assume that everyone would feel great doing it. Um, I'm, happy, I'm happy to go talk to, uh, maybe go check in with those guards, see where there's a job board, see where yeah. we might be able to actually, yeah. you know, yeah. do this. Go over we'll here, you, okay. go, you go ahead and do that. that yeah. Okay. I'm wondering if we could do uh, I wonder if we could uh, go back and speak to Xanthia a little bit more about uh, Lily's being, uh, you know, what maybe they've been very being used for and potions and such. And do we want to split the party? <laughs> oh. Well, we can see you. I, I'm assuming we can see you. Right? We see where the yeah, guards no, are. The party is always controversial because then the DM has more to do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to go along with when you talk to the guards. Oh, I'm going over there right now, so you can right. follow me or not. Whatever, whatever suits you. Yeah, no. We okay. can go to Xanthia's while you guys are doing that, if you want. Okay. I mean, I'm, efficiency, I don't know. We can meet back here in 20 minutes. Are you guys ever going to Xanthia's? Yeah, sure, yeah. Yeah, good. Cool. Right, let's go. Because, like, just still standing there, like, chewing on the street meat that you stole... <laughs> like 20 30 minutes ago um so there was two guards back down at the um temple square 
and um, which was where Xanthia's was, was down by the Temple Square. So if you're all heading off in that direction, you're not really yeah. splitting, splitting too far. Um, that works. So, go with the guards crew, whoever is speaking with the guards first of all, which is Tix. Is it just Tix who's dealing with the guards? Or is anyone else? I, I mean, care. primarily I'll let Tix, uh, Tix have the, uh, you know, take the lead on that. I may talk to him a bit about armament and, you know, see, see where it goes. Okay. Um, so going, going up to the guards, um, kind of see um, them standing there. Both kind of have um, hands on a sword, um, just one hard hand like casually resting on it and just, like easily, quite quickly grab it and pull it out um, if needs be. Um, they're not like too overly armoured. Um, you do see that they have like a, um, a kind of leather leather armor on that's studied um, and it does have like just down the middle there is a like metal plate in it um, and they both kind of have just um, like basic helmets on. You get that the guards they don't really see a lot of action in around the city it's more so just like if there's drunkards kind of about or thieves um, it's not like kind of the main action that they see they're not like dressed for war or anything mm -hmm. like that or in full like ornamental armor or anything like that. Um, going over to one of them, um, kind of just standing there, keeping an eye out. They kind of go, move on, and then they like, go back to just looking around. Are they? What race are they? Are they human? Or are they? One of them is a half elf, and the other is human. Okay. Oh. Uh, Excuse me, I've got a quick question for you if you have a second. Let's make it quick. No he's problem. He's looking at you now. Um, we're new here, and um, but while we were on our way into town, uh, we ran across a, a flower cart that had been robbed in the night um, mm -hmm. by possibly goblins. And we're just wondering if there's I don't know, a job board or or if anyone is seeking any, if this has been a problem that anyone might need help with or, you know, just something we can do to help since we, you know, help some folks on the way into town. Job board? Possible to tip them out. What was that, sorry? Uh, we're just looking to see if there's some way that we could help out and, uh, uh, of course, make a little bit of coin in the mm. process, too, to sustain ourselves. Okay. Um, just some travelers. Okay. I mean, just kind of nods along as you're you're both kind of talking. Um, and then he pulls his hand off of the sword um, and then uh, kind of points to the, um, let me see, the right-hand side of the temple as you're looking onto it. Um, mm -hmm. you do see like, kind of a small notice board um, like just a wooden notice board it's got like a glass case over it like you know the kind of ones that you see like outside of churches and stuff like that um, it looks just like yep. one of them um, he just points over to um, that, that's our, our main notice board our job board kind of over there um, if there's anything it'll be on there okay thank you uh, one more question if you wouldn't mind have you had any direct uh, interaction with uh, the goblins? Not me, personally. I'm just stationed here on lookout. Um, but some of our people did go out to Harry's a few days ago um, and had a little look around. Uh, I don't know who that was. Cool, cool. Come here. All right, thank you. Appreciate it. Alright, stay safe. He's kind of nods and then like, stands back up sharp and puts his hand back on his sword as you walk away. Gonna walk on over to that notice board. Okay, and so the crew in Xanthia's first. Um, you walk into Xanthia's, you've only been gone for like half an hour or something like that. Um, but you <laughs> see that she is back um, leaning over her ledger. Um, furiously writing in her ledger and um, not quite sure what she's writing but you imagine it might be for stock purposes for maybe what she she needs to make um, seeing as you bought three out of her 
potions that she had there. Um, bell rings above, yeah. and you walk in. You know, looks up and in size and like rolls her eyes, closes the ledger, and jumps back down off the stool. Hi, I know we were just here. Um, I just we had a quick question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, if do you, would you happen to know what a black lily would be used for, like in a potion or? What's the most common use for black lilies? For a black lily? They're mostly just used at funerals. Um, if it's just like a plain black lily. But there is the... Where is it? The... The death lily. Um, what's the death lily? That's black, if it's that one you're looking for. Okay, and what's that? Um... It's, it's this plant, um, it does have like black lily type petals um, and it's got these tendrils that come out and kind of entangle you so it's not the best thing to go near. Is it poisonous? I wouldn't say poisonous, it's, I haven't looked at is one it? myself but People say that when you look at it, you're looking at death and being embraced by death itself. Some people Wait, what? get a kick out of it. I'm not there, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is it carnivorous? Can it, it, does it like attack you? Like, how does, I mean, is it big? How big is this? we're talking about like well it's not bigger than me i've not seen it so but i know it's not like bigger than me and you know i mean i'm i'm a gnome as you can tell i'm smaller okay <laughs> just in case you've like, forgotten what race Cynthia was from last week Really, I don't want to say these next words, but it's gonna it's gonna happen. Does it eat you? <laughs> like kind of like deadpans you, like no, it entangles you. But like, oh. does it strangle you? Is it like devil snare? Yeah, is it like devil snare? <laughs> it's like no, it, like has tendrils that come out and just <laughs> grab you. That's it. Hmm. Well, I have seen this uh, type of lily before in my travels. No. Um, okay. Can I get the idea that it's probably quite rare? Okay. Um, And <laughs> um, where about can you like grow this plant or can you buy it anywhere? Kind of, she goes over and she pulls out this um, a big, massive, thick book that she has. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of get it says like botany on the spine, pulls it mm -hmm. out and like kind of just starts like flicking through looking for death lily. Um, kind of like going like this down each page and then she finally finds a tiny little entry. Mm -hmm. It says here that it would grow in a swamp area. Okay. There's really only like two kind of swamp areas really. Um, are they close by or are they quite far away? Do you happen to know where the goblin population resides? Um, I mean, why would you want to know? For the swamps, there's, <laughs> there's one down near Dremont. That's maybe about a week away. Um, the oh, other gosh. one is up by the D-R-E-M-O-N-T. And how far would this be by um, medieval Uber? <laughs> 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 um, 
Amazing. <laughs> five, five, five <laughs> hours. <laughs> well, so, so it's like, yeah, paid, a week I away. I need to get paid holiday now, so um, they, they can... Uh, it's like, oh... A week away, um, by, um, mm. by foot, um, okay. if you're just traveling on foot, where is my thing? Well, would you happen to know where we could cure a horse or a carriage? We need a horse and a cart. That's what we need. <laughs> um, main places to get a horse and cart would be stables. Um, okay, so I'm let's sure go to the stables. Can it says, um, <clears throat> where is all this? All my stuff is like just hiding from me today, and I have no idea where any of it is. There we go. So, so if you are traveling with a cart, um, you kind of get the idea. Um, those of you who have traveled by cart before, um, which I'm not sure right at the second who that would be. But you kind of know, <laughs> travelling by car, a week's journey would maybe take you four days. We'll see. Um, if you were travelling just at a normal speed, if you're going a little bit faster, um, it would take you three days. Hire someone to do it? No, no, no. I mean, just um, like, as a quick note, because I don't want to spend too much time. I have, I have knowledge in the room. Can I buy, buy some arrows somewhere for a short bow? Yeah. Um, there's a couple of blacksmiths around, it's quite easy to find some arrows there. Um, how many were you looking to buy? Um, I'm still here, I'm just eating. <laughs> I don't think anyone wants to see me eat spaghetti, so... That's fine. Um, if you're looking just for regular arrows, um, for 20, um, it'd be... One gold for 20 arrows. Okay. One gold for 20. It's, I'll, I'll, I, I can split, I can give you 10 if you want. Awesome, yeah. I don't know how many I can carry with me at a time. I'll look that um, up. Usually arrows don't take up that many. Yeah, and it's just about your, you're a dragonborn, you probably have a heavy carry You can carry more than I can, and I can definitely yeah. carry 20 arrows. <laughs> yeah, I definitely can. It's, yeah. I should be able to carry, like, loads. <laughs> So I'll take 10 and I'll give you 10. Awesome. Uh, and then I'll give you uh, 10. Or what was it? One, uh, or, yeah, 10 silver. Or, yeah, 10 silver, right? Yeah. <laughs> I honestly created a list of names earlier and now I can't find it. Oh well. <laughs> so I am proficient in uh, land vehicle or no. Yeah. Isn't it? Land vehicles, I think all vehicles. All vehicles. All vehicles. So I'm proficient in all vehicles, so I can drive the uh, cart. Where are my arrows? Just uh, heads up there. Excellent. Where are my arrows? Okay. Um, so if you're... Are you, are you all done now in Xanthia's, or do you have any more questions for her? Have you noticed any unusual happenings in the town recently? I haven't. Um, I mean, I don't really keep up to date with what other people are doing. Um, I mostly just, I'm a homebody, I, I stay here. Um, not one for gossip either. The best place to find if something's happening is probably to check your job board outside the temple. If there's weird things happening, any events or anything, they normally post stuff on that. Thanks for the heads up. No problem. Alright. You probably just head over to the job board. Okay. Yep. Uh, um, DM, I have a question. Yes. Are all the guards the Queen's guards? These ones that you see around about town, um, you kind of guess get the idea that they're more of like a, a police force, um, yeah. rather a than being the ones that are detailed to protect the Queen. Okay, thank you. 
thinking it might be beneficial to go up to... Oh, we're going to read the job board first. Yeah, no. but then also... Just... You'll kind of okay. meet up outside, um, work across the temple. Tex is already there um, with Torin and... Um, can you just see them looking at this job board, um, kind of scanning through. You, can, you see a um, couple postings um, for like um, lost flask, um, missing <laughs> dog, like the usual kind of stuff that you see on a board. Um, can you see like the, like a band Cat. poster almost, um, <laughs> telling people that there's um, this band playing at the what's the name of it. Um, the Crooked Raven, um, but that's in like a week's time, and then you kind of see like a a wanted poster, and it's got like a really cr crudely drawn image of a goblin. Um, like you probably wouldn't be able to tell it was a goblin except for the fact that they have coloured it in like a very bold green colour, and it has like the very distinctive <laughs> goblin ears. It's the only distinguishable. F um, pieces on this um, poster to say that um, it's a goblin um, but there's it says um, wanted um, goblins raided Harry's farm um, bring us the the goblins um, reward um, 500 gold I think we need to check out Harry's farm Bingo. Okay. Is that given a like a place to find Harry's farm? <laughs> we have. So you... Is that on the map at all? It's medieval not... Google map. <laughs> <laughs> map, 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 map. Maybe the Uber driver will roll <laughs> The Uber driver. Okay. That's um, not bingo. It. It's pretty easy to ask around um, for where Harry's farm is. Um, okay. They. We tell you um, that it's on the, the kind of left approach to the city, so it's not the approach that you came into or the other road that you saw. It's completely on the, on the other side of the city, over by the um, flower fields, um, where you saw the like vast array of flowers um, in various different colours as you were coming into the city. Um, it's easy enough to ask, and they tell you that he's stationed out there. So heading out there, if that's where you all want to go. Um, so Harry's Harry's farm, yeah, yeah, Harry's farm, Harry's farm. Okay. I'm good with it. Um, walking there from that square, uh, it take you half an hour, forty five minutes to walk out there. Um, cool. I think it is a large city, but the main kind of roads. Um, it does move quite quickly on those main roads, so it's not like little back alleys and streets you have to go through. And um, they are quite large streets with with areas for carts to come in and out. Um, and they're very well, um, kind of trafficked, if that makes any sense. And that the the guards um that are stationed at the entrance and the exit way, um, you do kind of see them like kind of speaking to themselves every so often, um, with a finger up at their ear, um, to you see like a couple carts coming down and then you see them talking to each other and then a few more carts going up. So you kind of guess this is like a traffic system as well and um, that not only are they looking out for what's going around um, there are people, um, these kind of policemen who to do act as like traffic lights. It's the only way to explain it. Um, so walking out there you don't really get too far out of the city um, before you kind of see a sign, like a wooden sign like um, hammered into the ground um, mm -hmm. that's got some black writing on it um, that just says Harry's Grove and um, with an arrow that kind of points up the way. Um, so yeah, walk just like the way. Walking up to it you see like a, a stone building um, mm -hmm. that's got like a, like a lot of flowers. It's got like a like a little picket fence outside and it looks as though he's got like his own little garden. Um, mm -hmm and um it's got like a kind of thatch roof so it looks like your kind of quintessential like countryside kind of house um knock on the door but there's no one in um but it's still kind of afternoon time so um kind of imagine that he's out in the fields just now all right 
so perhaps we should look around the farm and see if we can find hair. Yeah. Okay. So looking around, it doesn't really take too long, um, but you do see kind of five minutes walk away, you see like a small cart um, with someone like bent over, almost as if they're, they're tending the flowers. So you walk up um, and the first thing you notice is that there is a like a wide brimmed kind of straw hat um, with like a bit of cloth coming down the back to like protect the neck from the sun. Um, mm-hmm. There is um, a shirt that this person is wearing. Um, you can't really tell what colour it used to be um, just because of the amount of dirt. Um, it's been out in the sun so it's been sun bleached quite a lot um, and with working outside in the hot days like that um, it's kind of gone like a little bit orangey um, mm. don't wear any trousers but they do have um, lots of fur on the bottom half um, kind of hears you walking along um, kind of looks up um, got like a trowel in one hand um, and a goblet mm-hmm. in the other hand. Cool. Harry? I'd like to go up and say, hey there, friend! Question mark? Hey! Hi! And they kind of pop up. You see like these two tiny little horns coming out the brim of the hat. Um, as if of like, being, being a space like kind of pop, uh, popped out there for it. Um, and like short brown curly hair, but it's got like little flowers braided into it. Um, at the front. Oh, oh. So, um, Hey there, you wouldn't happen to be Harry, would you? My name's Torn, and these are my friends. We're, we're traveling through town. Yes, I'm Harry. Oh my god, I sounded like Harry Potter there. <laughs> Harry, I'm glad that we found you. Uh, we've heard that the goblins have been stealing flowers, and uh, that you had a problem with the goblins uh, stealing from your mm. farm in particular. And we're looking to try and uh, find a way to help out. And, also, make a little money, of course, to uh, perhaps from the Queen or whoever. I don't recall who set up the... Uh, I think it was him. Well, did you? <laughs> I don't have great intelligence. <laughs> it's actually... Neither do I. Indeed, I'm better. <laughs> you, Harry, that we're looking, looking to pay someone for help. Yeah, that's me. Nasty business. Nasty, nasty business. Those those goblins. Um, he kind of stands up and walks over and on the little cart you see this barrel. Um, he kind of puts puts the goblet underneath and like switches the kind of latch and um, out comes some wine. Um, kind of lets it fill almost to the brim. Shuts it off and then goes and takes a big massive swig of it before he starts talking again. Um, they, they, they came in the middle of the night and... Yeah, they, for some reason, only took all the black flowers. Like, those black tulips, those black, black lilies, um, black hmm. poppies. They kind of just took anything and everything that was black, which was really, really strange. But, I mean, they left all the other ones, and we don't sell too many of the black flowers to the... Do you grow flowers? We, we grow... Um, Poppies, tulips, um, lilies, orchids, um, kind of like stands up and walks over and you kind of see um, like off in the distance there's like a like a greenhouse, a, um, a big massive greenhouse um, just filled to the brim with all these flowers that you imagine would like kind of grow in like a more tropical environment and um, like birds of paradise and things like that and he's just got them all stuffed into this big massive greenhouse. Yeah, kind of grew everything. How long- how long ago did this happen? How long ago was, was your farm raided? Kind of thinks. Well, last night, there was a lot of wine. And Kyron was here. Who was? And the night before, Eva was there. And two nights before that, it was Bill that was here. So yeah, four nights ago. Uh, do you know where the goblins came from, or do you, did they say anything? Like 
Like, leave any, leave anything? They didn't leave anything. I, I heard them talking outside. There was only a couple of them. But they kind of ran off back down the road, like the main road area. Hmm. Um, In what direction? Um, so they went back down onto the main road and turned away from the city. So they continued going left, like on the main road, like out of the city. Okay. These people that you mentioned, are they employees of yours or family? It's just friends. Just friends. Friends? And were they working at the farm? No, they just come over and, they, and we all drink. We held them over. Oh, socially. Oh, social thing. Oh, oh, I'm socially. sorry. I don't mean to dig into your personal <laughs> life, sir. <laughs> 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 yeah, I I put the the poster up. Um, so if you're if you're able to help, that would be perfect because then hopefully it means they'll just won't come back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we definitely can. We definitely can help. We're trying to. We're gathering as much information as we can and see if we can help put it into it. Uh, yeah. So you're. I just said a 500 gold reward, if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah, 500 gold. <laughs> would that be each, or would that just be for everyone, in, like, for the whole group? It's a 500 gold total reward, so if you want to split it, you can. I don't suppose you have any money for expenses or per diem on top of some healing potions some healing potions some supplies some anything wine. anything that might be helpful <laughs> i'm pretty sure leaf wouldn't mind having some of that wine uh, yeah <laughs> well, wine, he kind of goes right into the cart and he like pulls out another goblet fills it up um to the brim again shuts it off and hands it over to leaf um, one, one thing you do notice about the wine, you imagined that with it being such a hot day and being outside that this wine would be really quite warm, but mm. it's like a nice kind of like chilled almost room temperature, um, a little bit below room temperature, so it's a nice kind of chilled wine that you've got there um, nice. out of this barrel. Temperature controlled wine barrel? <laughs> that's some bad. That's some <laughs> Can I um, try to smell it? Yeah, you can smell it. Um, it smells like uh, wine. Kind of... In town that are that have had the same problem as just uh, this year farm. Just my farm that I know of. I'm really the only one that grows the um, the black flowers. Um, everybody around here just kind of wants all the bright, colorful flowers. Especially this time of year, everyone just wants bright, colorful flowers. Mm-hmm. But again, um, Harry, did you, I forgot if you answered, but did you, do you grow death lilies or just black flowers? Just black ones. I don't really. I am back to check. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you can go ahead and insight check. Oh yeah, I want to insight check too. Okay. Um, <laughs> you can either roll separately or one of you can roll with advantage. Um, uh, <laughs> mm. I mean, you, you. If you want, I can give you advantage. Okay, cool. Okay, let's roll this thing. Yeah, so that's a nineteen. Okay. Um, looking around um, and looking in, like the like, quick look over at the greenhouse and things like that. Um, and from his demeanor, um, you do get that he doesn't grow things like that. Um, just due to the nature of them. Um. So he, he just doesn't grow death lilies or anything like that. Um, for death lilies, they're, they're really hard to cultivate. I mean, staring into one makes you feel as though you're looking at death itself. So don't imagine why anyone would want to cultivate it. That, in fact, it kind of tangles you up. So that makes it a bit difficult. Yeah. So then why are they stealing black flowers? Is there any use for these flowers? Apart from looking black and... Being used for funerals? Not really. Do you do goth parties or uh, <laughs> uh, like at all? I might, be, I might be crazy, but do you think they're maybe planning the funeral for a goblin queen? I'm 
Because okay. there might have recently been a dead goblin queen. This is the rock band. Yeah. Uh, that's why. That's what would else have been told. That there's a rock band called Goblin Queen. So, I'm just, you know, I'm just, I'm just spitballing here. But there is a recently dead goblin queen, and mm -hmm. they might need funeral flowers. Oh, it's all the money she was collecting. You think that somehow they'd be able to afford to buy goblins? Don't buy goblins shit. Are cheap. Goblins are steal everything. Look, like, there's nothing wrong with stealing. Well, I mean, River is the exception because River is our friend. <laughs> Generally speaking, and I guess it's not good to generalize, but there's the Ferengi of the D and D world. And I'm not going to pretend like I've never stolen anything ever. <laughs> right? <laughs> but I'm not goblin by any chance. I've, stole, I've stolen a lot of things. But so funny, I've stolen um, a lot of hearts, too. Oh, oh. <laughs> Funny story, true story. It has to do with that cowboy hat and that beard with the long hair. <laughs> yeah, that was, a good, that was one of my uh, many phases growing up. So funny story, true story. I don't necessarily <laughs> speak goblin, but I can speak whatever language of the thing I turn into. <laughs> so, I say we go track down these fucking goblins because <laughs> I say we go track down these fucking goblins. <laughs> right? I am on board. <laughs> Being in the city, man, it's not. I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong. Drag queen and drinking is awesome. <laughs> Look, we come back for poetry night. We'll go kill some goblins. Come back. Yeah. We're we'll back in time for poetry night. I'm, I am down. I mean, I'm good. I got my spells prepared. I got some new arrows, and I'm always prepared to stabby stab. So I'm good. I mean, it's still we, pretty decent time of the day, though, so, because you said it was like I, three days away, wasn't it? <laughs> I feel like since they're attacking at night, should we be searching for them in the evenings? We could just wait here. See if they can. Well, they already I mean, took all the black flowers. Wait, Harry, have we grown? No, no, it's been like four days. Good, but I'm it. not that good. No. What about if we set up a trap and try and catch one? Mm -hmm. Okay, like, so we gotta find them first. <laughs> Harry, who has? Who's the next person in town that has the most black flowers? Well, he's the only one that grows them. Only I'm, one? I'm the only. I'm, I'm really the only one that grows the black ones. I mean, I, I hate to say it, but I, really have, I think we have to head toward. Yeah, Dreamont, Dreamont, Dreamont. I think so too. Wherever the fuck we go, rent a horse though, because otherwise it's going to take us a week to get there. Mm. Well, I can give you a cart and some horses, but <clears throat> I've loaned them out, and I won't have them till the morning. We'll take them along. I'm, You'll have them tomorrow? Yeah, yeah. Bill's bringing them back tomorrow. Okay. And, who is there and, and as like he's talking um, and kind of dark. saying, yeah, I can bring them back tomorrow, um, these like really dark clouds just suddenly appear out of nowhere, um, out of like this cloud cloudless sky that there was previously, and um, the heavens just open up and it's just this deluge of rain that just instantly comes down and soaks everything in its entirety. You kind of get this really do, do any of you know like what the summer storms are like in Toronto that kind of last for an hour cause massive yeah. flash flooding and then disappear mm -hmm. and yep. there's like no trace of it? Mm -hmm. Listen, it only rains for five minutes that. in Vegas. I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> So it's like one of the, the big massive storm that kind of appears for like an hour, hour and a half, causes huge flooding, and then just disappears in the grounds dry like half an hour later. Is that like right. what is that? You guys want to go back in town and then wait it out and then go early tomorrow with the cart? Mm -hmm. Or do we just need to go see how much a cart and a horse is? And we're gonna get, get one for free. True, I'm valid, valid, and God <laughs> wants all to care. <laughs> Made any money yet? Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> we have not yet 
to go back to for <laughs> let's go enjoy that. poetry night i guess <laughs> yeah i really need to get out of this rain because i'm not looking at it <laughs> <laughs> wet cat is not cool <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna take my shield off my head and just hold out my arm over a river with a shield okay. on it, like a little umbrella. <laughs> oh. Okay, that's Thank cute. <laughs> um, so walking back into town, it takes you a little bit longer because the the pathway like down to the main road is like, extremely muddy now and it's very slippy. Uh, so it takes you a little bit longer to get back there. So it takes you maybe closer to forty five minutes to an hour to get back into town. Um, and then to get to the tavern itself, um, which if you're going back to the the singing dragon, um, sorry, um, in the new town area, um, yeah, it takes you about an hour to get back there. But it's all when you get into the city, it's all main roads. It's all kind of cobblestone areas, um, so. It's just a lot of water that's kind of left sitting there now so you're kind of sloshing your way through all all the rainwater trying to get back to the tavern. Um, even though it's very rainy, um, a lot of the water is just kind of caught by the like kind of overhangs that are going across each of the, the roofs of the buildings. Um, so it's kind of draping down even further, kind of just coming down in little tiny droplets. Um, and kind of over spilling onto sides and just causing these areas where there's very little rain and then just huge deluges of la of rain um, in the areas where there's tiny little gaps where the sun was coming down earlier. <clears throat> um, but walking back into town um, takes you an hour. The rain is still going a little bit but it's um, not quite as heavy as what it was when you first started to leave Harry's. Um, when you get into the tavern itself um, are quite a lot of wet, soggy people in the tavern. Um, everybody's like just kind of taking their, their coats off um, and kind of just put them up over like kind of coat racks. Um, and up on the um, stage area, there's now um, a couple stools set up um, and like a, a couple tables. Um, you kind of imagine would be for people that are doing the open mic. Uh, when I walk in, I promptly do the like animal shaky thing and. <laughs> Yeah, sorry. Water goes everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> the water sprays everywhere. Um, it does not smell good. That's it smells so like white fur. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, you better be. Sorry. So um, there are quite a few tables um, that are empty just now because it's still relatively early on. Um, it's probably closer to like maybe four five o'clock now at this stage by the time you've done all your shopping looked at job boards went out to harry's and came back um so you imagine it's kind of getting closer to a time where it's probably going to start picking up soon when it's all the the shops and businesses shut down for the day do i see any wealthy looking individuals make a perception check oh Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Um, you see in the booth um, that you were speaking with the gentleman the previous night, he is sitting there. He doesn't have as many people around about him, but he is sitting there. Um, there are a few other people kind of sitting at some of the other tables. Um, everybody looks really wet at the moment, um, just from the rain. Um, I'm looking for a big coin pouch. Okay. Um, most people are sitting down at the moment, um, but you see... Just kind of hanging off of some of them. Some people do have their, their coin pouches kind of stashed more towards the back for some reason. Um, you get the idea that maybe they've kind of moved it around so they can sit down a little bit more comfortably. So I go over to Leaf. Mm -hmm. Hey. So. Mm -hmm. I'm bored. <laughs> yeah. I will let you <laughs> my target this time. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, or the bar or wherever we are where are we again <laughs> in the bar <laughs> in a bar area, area. Okay. i mean that that gobble oh, away yeah. got to your leaf <laughs> yeah no <not> <laughs> so strong um 
right target 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 so who do i see in the bar like what so you, kind of description you see the gentleman that you saw the night before um that had the big okay. gold kind of amulet um mm-hmm. that river already kind of pocketed the night before but then like gave oh, back yeah. um mm-hmm. you see a couple of humans just dotted mm-hmm. around the place um you see a few tieflings um mm-hmm. a couple of orcs um mm-hmm. kind of a mix between like male and female um they are kind of all dressed in like collared shirts mm-hmm. um and some like kind of some of them are in fancier robes you see one of the half elves is kind of dressed in like a purple robe um okay. over in a corner near the windows okay so your target river is going to be the person in the corner in the purple robe <laughs> <laughs> okay and this time what is the wager okay um <laughs> well you you we picked it last time that you would drink a shot of blood mm-hmm. what, what would what, what should be what should it be it's up to you it's your turn this time oh is it my turn this time i thought i picked last time more challenges um, <laughs> if you can get back uh, a pouch of money for us mm-hmm. Um, you can, I will get you, uh, what was the name of the city? Where um, we some, I'll try and, uh, find some arrows for you, like, from, from the, the crowd in the bar and try and get them myself, try and stealthily get them. And if you lose, then, hmm, <laughs> you have to... Dance on the bar. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll pretend to throw coins at you. <laughs> so, can you be ugly style? <laughs> okay. How bored are you? <laughs> I don't even I'm bored. I just need a challenge. And this is a challenge. <laughs> okay. I'm going to be shake on it. <laughs> all right so okay. i'm going to stealthily move over to the what is purple, it purple robe guy okay. person. i don't know i don't know <laughs> so you walk over you see um a half elf sitting over there i've got long black hair that's kind of um like braided off in one side but not the other side um they've got um purple robes on that have got no sleeves um but look, they are like long um, they've got like um, kind of white, like puffy um, shirt sleeves um, that have on one arm that's kind of tied around a little bit with a piece of leather. And they're sitting over there. Um, they are facing someone else. Um, they are facing a human, a human male, um, who's kind of short, cropped, blonde hair. Uh, they're dressed in. Uh, uh, just a, a plain white shirt um, with um, just a tankard in front of them. And they First, I'm going to make an a perception check. I just want to make sure they don't have any um, of the symbols. Okay. Um, go ahead and make a perception check. Fifteen. Okay. I'm um, looking around um, on the gentleman that you can see straight on, the human. Uh, you don't see any any emblems or anything like that. He doesn't appear to be wearing like any jewellery or anything. Alright, so um, I'm going to stealth somewhere in the proximity. Um, I don't really think so. <laughs> I'm going to go up <laughs> okay. to the table. Um, is there like a booth behind them or is there like somewhere I can be there's like standing but just chilling like I'm looking around they, they are kind of in front of the window um, but tucked into the corner a little bit the window's not quite in the corner the table itself is um, kind of pushed into a corner it's got a couple chairs round about um, one chair is kind of like tucked right the way into the back corner which is where the human male is uh, the half elf uh, is looking kind of onto them um, at a diagonal um, to the corner 
Uh, there is a, con a couple of other tables off to the side there as well, which do have other chairs, but uh, all of the those chairs are empty at the moment. And can I see the coin pouch? Yeah, um, it's kind of, they've moved it kind of back round to the back, um, just to be able to try and sit a little bit easier. Um, because if it's right at their, so gonna, their side, um, you imagine it would be kind of hard to get into. I'm going to nonchalantly kind of walk by and act like I'm going down to tie my boot. Okay. Stealthily? I do that. Sneaky! I'm just like seeing River like slightly hesitant, like go forward. I'm going to nudge her a bit just to like, <laughs> oh, come on, get on with okay. it. Okay, so I'm just going to bend down, act like I'm tying my boot in that area or whatever. Okay. Um, and can I use my tail, which I've kind of kept hidden? Can mm -hmm. I use that to kind of slink it and take the. Okay. Um, make a sleight of hand check in for me. Sleight of tail check? <laughs> yeah, sleight of tail check. <laughs> Athletics, though, because it's like, you're moving oh, your body. <laughs> <laughs> An 11. That's an 11. An 11. Okay. Um, you, you're moving your tail around to try and get it. Um, even though it's quite a larger coin pouch, um, you can't quite get your tail wrapped around it and you try and pull on it um, but it, all it does is it kind of tugs on their belt and um, you kind of see them look down um, and you just, up and go, oh so sorry I didn't know what it was doing sorry and I walk away <laughs> you kind of just stare like what the <laughs> hell is going on um, and then just go back to our conversation so hi <laughs> Hey. <laughs> so where's the pouch? Come on. Bring us the goods. I didn't get it. Oh, well, <laughs> that means it's the dance of the century. Come on, get up. <laughs> I've got my, yeah, yeah, I've got my coins. Get away until, like, like, I don't know, people, I don't, now? Yeah, yeah, this is the moment. I don't know, would you rather wait till there's more people in the bar? It's only going to get busier. <laughs> All right. <laughs> like, shush, ticks. <laughs> she doesn't need to know that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. I'm just sitting pretending I don't know any of you. <laughs> Are you, like, sitting off at another table, like, just by yourself? <laughs> My cat, like, no, nope, not me. <laughs> Um, so I looked to the bartender, and I was like, is there, like, any, like, is there any music? There it's is, because I've already looked. There's a jukebox. It's, it's a medieval <laughs> jukebox. <laughs> and then I'm going to whack the jukebox, and I'll pick a okay. medieval song. So it's from, not, like, so, not so much <laughs> a jukebox um, <laughs> as, like, a crank-style, like, um, vinyl Aww. player. Like a crank right. style record player that you have to physically go over and crank well, the handle around on it to get it to crank, power up. I will crank the handle of this thing. <laughs> so I go up onto the bar. You can see my ears are like sagging. They're not. They're, they're down. <laughs> 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 so you go up onto the bar and the bartender's just like um, readying who you, he met last game. Um, the, the half orc um, barman. You're just kind of looking at you like and then like going like this with the. Um, the cloth that he's holding, trying to clean off the bar and clean up the glasses and things like that to try and show you off. And then you hear um, <laughs> from the from the crank style um, vinyl record player, um, you hear like this weird, like very slow, melancholic um, violin music. Oh. <laughs> I click my boot in haste because okay. there's supposed to be some kind of ruby slipper thing. Yeah. So they're nice <laughs> I go into my pouch, and I rustle into the coin bag, and I go, oh, I don't want to use my actual coins, so I, find, <laughs> so I actually find some, like, pebbles or some, like, gravel <laughs> in the bar, or, like, bits of food, and I'm just like, this will do, okay. and I go, whoop, whoop, and you, I'm like, whoa, You kind of find the table, <laughs> and the, the readying's not quite cleared up yet from, like, kind of a, an early evening meal, um, and it's got, like, little bits of chicken bone and some <laughs> carrots left on it. Yeah, that's what I use. So I'm gonna like throw it out. Yeah, <laughs> Come and on. So, 
Okay, so a make a, a performance check for me, River. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yes. I'm just gonna shake. Um, so it's my friend. That's a fourteen. Okay. Um. So hearing this music is quite hard to get into like a kind of dance rhythm to it. It's like almost like you're slow waltzing up on the up on the bar by yourself. I'm gonna get a beer and be like, this is the party. Radine's just century. looking like, oh, this is too early for this shit, and walks away. <laughs> Come on, give us the money, and then I'll, I, I like nudge the, the the person next to me, and I go, "Yo, how much money do you want to give?" <laughs> oh, you are pimping out uh, river! Uh, wow. <clears throat> kind of look at you like this is like the best way to get money. <laughs> like are they Have you ever money? Or the, or the hour. Are we talking? I'm not gonna stay in sex work, but it better be consensual. <laughs> this was a wager. Have you met River? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> this was a wager. It's like a. <laughs> right. Go kitty cat. Seeing how awkward River is, uh, I'm gonna then jump on the bar and oh join her. Okay. So I'm, gonna do, I'm gonna do a performance check okay. now. Oh, I think I'm gonna now be pretending I don't know these. <laughs> uh, my performance is a uh, seventeen. Okay. Um. So you you managed to um even with this slow violin music, you've ma you managed to kind of grab River into um like a duo waltz and uh, start leading them around the bar. Um, and this weird waltz on this tiny little bit and so you're just kind of like almost going side to side but going around in a circle at the same time <laughs> Radian comes up slams two tankers down I will give you these for free if you get off my fucking bar <laughs> I'm gonna jump down so I'm gonna jump down and do an athletics check and that is athletics uh, that's a 16 so I do a backflip <laughs> off the bar and I down the tankard of beer okay <laughs> I also I really don't know them I promise off the bar okay and I uh, oh. <laughs> hey, sorry <laughs> 15. 15. Um, you, you managed to get off the bar. Um, you don't stumble on anything. Um, you don't quite stick the landing perfectly, but you managed to jump off. Um, land, land a backflip. Um, land a little tiny bit awkwardly, um, but you don't like fall over or anything like that. It's the shoes. <laughs> <laughs> You're not. <laughs> so the, the, the other three, um, Mika Torn and Tex, what are you three doing while all this is going on? <laughs> Looking anywhere other than at them. Uh, this is this is me right now. Right. Let's see how much money we got. I'm gonna yeah, have a look. Did we get any cash? Yeah. Um. In terms of like people throwing money up at you, or yeah, money. Yeah, yeah. Even if you get down, that's fine. Yeah. Um. The bar itself is quite empty just now. You get the idea that it's not quite lively enough yet for people to start throwing money up. Um. Like magic mix style or anything like that. Well, you got a free drink. You can have both. You can have mine. Okay. I click your glass and then I take it off your boat. <laughs> so the the night is yours for whatever you would oh, like to yeah. do with your your evening and your night and the singing dragon. So that was one wild night, guys. Ah, I think it's time to like take the hay, maybe? I don't know. What time is it? It's just like 6 o'clock in the evening at this point. Yeah, oh. not that way. Not that way. <laughs> uh, I think I I just start to fall. Well, I'm in the bitches. We're so rude. Since we're going to be setting for 
Mm-hmm. I'm actually a little bit like this is a lot of night. This is already a second night in in town, and I'm not used to being around people really. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> And I know that we're going to be maybe heading into trouble. So I am going back up to my room. And I'm going to okay. sit down. And I'm going to lay out my sword. And I'm going to spend a solid two hours just cleaning and sharpening the shit. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go outside, <laughs> climb a tree, chill there for a while. I'm just going to, like, fall okay. asleep on the nearest person to me and I have a student Mika who's in like the chair next to me but I didn't obviously see her because she's so small so I'm just like ah, this lovely yeah, so still. procuring rooms for the night again um that was where was the price if you're getting your three rooms again um it would be how much did I say last time I think it was um <laughs> It was like silver. not a lot. Yeah, I think it was like two silver per night or something like that per room. Um, something too bad. Yeah. Um, so it'll be another six silver for the three rooms again. Um, or however you're divvying that up um, and divvying the rooms up there as well. Um, I can take, I'll pay for this one. Okay. okay. Um, those who want food, it's easy enough to procure. Um, for buying drinks and food for the evening for everyone. Um, I'd say that puts you down three gold pieces for food and drink for everyone for the full evening. And that's multiple drinks per person. Okay, I'll throw in a gold for I'll throw in a gold. I'll throw in a gold for that. Okay. Um, Going up sharpening your sword for a couple of hours after you eat. Um, Going outside. Finding a train sitting up there and um, just looking kind of at the, an eye the sunset and keeping an eye out. Um, for a couple of hours, that would put you maybe at nine o'clock. And um, if you go back down to the bar at that point, um, open mic night is kind of getting underway. Um, there are some people going up onto the, the stage itself. Um, there, some of them do kind of have um, booklets that are in the bar. You can kind of you see some of the drag queens from the and drag kings from the night before. Um, you kind of get that this is like a, a program um, of events that the Singing Dragon puts on um, where they do various um, drag shows, um, open mic nights for poetry, for bands, things like that. Um, you kind of get that it's like a, a program kind of thing that they put on um, for their patrons. <laughs> so um, enjoying a, an evening of poetry, um, of good food and um, alcohol for those of you who decide to drink. Um, go upstairs, you get a good night's rest um, and uh, you're well rested for the following morning. Um, Did that cute tiefling from the, from the shop happen to like show up at the bar that yeah. night? Um, so Pandora <laughs> and Mets both come in um, around about 10 o'clock. Um, ten o'clock at night. They both they both come in. Um, they have changed their clothes a little bit. Um, so Pandora previously was in like long sleeves with the um, the goggles and the gloves and things like that. They have now changed into like a white crop top um, with like slim fit trousers and like medieval equivalent of um, Doc Martens. Um, basically, they're <laughs> medieval punk. <laughs> Um, and mates, mates beside her, um, they have changed into a um, almost like a like the granddad collar style um, shirts. Um, it's grey. Um, they still do have the, the kind of grey pants and the um, black kind of calf length boots on as well. And they do turn up. They um, look over um, at the table that you've managed to procure for the evening and um, with your various drinks um, leave kind of asleep on Mika's shoulder um, at this point um, after having a lot of drink um, which seems about on par for Leaf um, and they, they kind of smile and wave over at you um, and then kind of like go off up to the bar, order their drinks and head off to, to a table that's um, over by the stage I just wink when they wave. <laughs> you kind of see Pandora br- blush a little bit, um, and then Mets like kind of like jabs them in the the ribs and kind of laughs at it. 
um, and then puts her arm, <laughs> put, puts her arm around uh, Pandora's shoulder, and they they walk off to their to their table. <laughs> so good evening is had by all. Lots of drink is taken, um, and you head upstairs for a long rest. And that's where we're going to take a little break. Dark. In the dark. So you, so you all wake up together. You're somehow not where you remember being. It's a you're in a cold, dark cell that's barely lit by a single candle that's held over the door. The cell and the room beyond, they all have very low ceilings and it's cold, damp walls. And you can hear some muted chatter going on from the floor above where you are. When you wake up, you feel something that's a little bit weird. Something you don't remember being there. You feel a metal collar placed around your neck. <laughs> you have absolutely no idea where it came from. Try to pull it off and it sticks there. It doesn't move at all. Sorry, started talking. Um, and it started to... Um, it, the metal collar doesn't move whatsoever, so it's just stuck there and you have no idea how to get it off. But when you look across the room, you're not there alone. You see four other people are in the room with you. So if you would all like to explain, starting off with Abby, who everybody else sees. <coughs> Wait, what was that? Who do I see? Yep, so so what does everybody else see when they look at you? Oh gosh, when they look at me? Yes. <laughs> so, I'm describe, so I'm describing my appearance? Yes. <laughs> um, so basically they see a very slim um, figure of a wood elf um, in light leather armour um, with pale skin and grey green here. And oh. if you look at Elbear Rodeo, you'll see the character. Ah! Oh, that's so cool! Oh, that's so cool. Okay, so we're just going to work around in a clockwise circle from where I can see everybody. So, <coughs> Kristen, you're up. Oh, it's me. So, <laughs> you see small figure curled up um, with a shock of red hair and slightly tan skin just kind of curled in a corner asleep and our characters now up <laughs> oh, I love it if you would like to go next. Like Princess Fiona. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Leela. Me? Yeah. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> um. <laughs> Alright, so at first glance, you see someone medium, medium height, 
with very pale, pale skin, silver hair. Um, but as you're looking, you notice that the skin is starting to turn kind of dark blue as I am darting my eyes around this face trying to figure out what the fuck is going on. <laughs> And the characters live up. Yeah. Ooh. Trish, you're next. I suppose. Oh, yes. So what you see before me is a six foot three, very sloppy, handsome dragon boy. Uh, that was gold, golden skin, a scar upon my face. Missing a tail. Bright blue eyes. Ah. Wow. And Aaron, you're last. Oh, don't. All right. So, what you see is a small, furry, cat like creature. Um, cloak. Um, definitely freaking out a little bit about being <laughs> uh, yellow eyes, um, and uh, kind of brown, light brown rings around the tail, but mostly orange. <laughs> so cool. Okay. So the next thing you'll notice is that all your stuff is gone. You only have everything that you have on you. All your packs, all your weapons, everything is not there. And you have no idea where it is. Darn. So you all wake up um, after a, a long rest um, and a lively evening as such as it was for a poetry night in a gay bar. Um, you all wake up. Um, it is still quite warm but it's not quite as warm as the other days um, since you've been either in or close to the city. Um, Looking out the window, you do see that there is um, a little bit of cloud cover um, on this day. Uh, so there is like some kind of wispy white clouds up in the sky. I'm um, going down um, to regroup. Um, the morning is yours. Or if there's anything that you wanted to do before you go and pick up the horse and cart from Harry. Eat. <laughs> Eat. Oh, no, a little breakfast. You get a little breakfast, you get the card. Yep. Easy enough to get breakfast. Um, the owner of the bar, Redeem the Half Orc, um, he is able to bring out breakfast easily enough for you. It's quite a hearty breakfast, um, like bacon, um, sausages, potatoes, eggs, um, some toast um, with like some nice freshly baked bread as well. Um, so it's quite easy enough to, to get like a hearty breakfast and um, also brings out like, um, a little bit of fruit um, as well there. Like a little, little fruit cloud. Because airplane. <laughs> so is this a, the Continental? Do we still have to pay for it? <laughs> yeah, is it included in our stay? <laughs> the breakfast itself is included within the stay. Um, but like the, the evening's food and drink, um, yeah. we've already paid for that. So the, the breakfast itself is included. Wee. Awesome! Extra bacon. Nom nom nom. <laughs> I take some bread and pocket it. Okay. Oh yeah, good idea. No, I it in the pocket. Pocket bacon. Pocket bacon. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want pocket bacon. <laughs> some bread. Some fruit. Let's bag it all. <laughs> you, you see, <laughs> Reddy, I'm just kind of looking cloth. weirdly at, at you as you're like throwing all this. Um, Food that he's brought um, <laughs> just into a bag. Put a piece of bread in my pocket. <laughs> yeah, um, you put an he, apple he doesn't in my see pocket. anything, and nope. um, he just looks like, okay. You um, did a, you did a napkin trick where you put it over, 
And then you kind of go, <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> I've totally not done that. I might have done that somewhere. Breakfast has been <laughs> had. Um, <laughs> if there's anything else you need to pick up in town before you head off, um, now would kind of be the, the time to do it for if you needed to pick anything else up. No, we're good. We're good. Let's okay. rob a bank. What? Okay. So Robert heading back Bang. off to Harry's, um, he is in his little cottage just now. Um, you can kind of hear some laughter coming from the inside, but as you you knock on the door, he comes out. Um, What's going on? He does have like yeah, he, he has like fully dressed and whatnot. He doesn't have his hat on or anything like that just now. Um, and he takes you over to the kind of back of his house area, um, where he's got like a little stable set up. Um, and there are two horses, um, as well as a cart there um, that he lets you borrow for the duration of um, finding the goblins who stole all of his black flowers that he was that he was growing. So I look at Harry <clears throat> and I say, "If we bring back if they're if the flowers and they're in good condition, is there an extra?" Well, if you, bring, if you manage yeah, to get yeah, all yeah, the plants back, um, or even just some of them, um, you do get a lot of good money from them because I'm the only one that does them. So I could throw in an extra 250. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So I suppose I should, uh, since I know what I'm doing, mm -hmm. I'll go ahead and uh, <laughs> get the cart ready. Okay. So. Know what I'm doing. <laughs> so it's easy enough to get the cart ready. Um, he's he's already um, knowing that you were coming to pick it up. They've left it kind of all still tacked up, so the horses are still on the cart itself. Um, but they um, were like kind of tied up to the post with some reins, so then they couldn't just go off on their own um, and wander about. Um, and the cart itself is big enough to have two people up front. Um, and it's kind of open um, with an area in the back there, so people can kind of sit in the back. Right, I'm going to sit in the back. Okay. Oh, I'll take them off the post and climb on front. And since I don't have a tail, it's very easy for me to sit up here and uh, take the reins in hand. Okay. Is uh, anyone else sitting up front, or is everyone else going in the um, back? I, I look at Mika. <laughs> He's been very quiet. <laughs> and I say, does your um, owl, does it mean it out for us or? You can do, yeah. Do you want to sit up front then? Um, I don't no, mind. I'll be, I'll be quite comfortable in the back. Okay. She can come okay. and go as she pleases. And as you see that, um, small white speck in a distance comes up almost as if she listens out for you um, and seeing that you're about to leave she kind of flies down and perches herself um, on one of the like kind of posts on the mm -hmm. cart um, and just kind of tucks her head under a wing and goes to sleep. That's a quick nap. I'm just gonna like lay out in the back of the cart and just be like ah. <laughs> so snacks. Gonna enjoy the bunnies. Good old times. Okay. <laughs> oh. I think you have fun with some fire. Uh, what did you perception. remember? What did you say your perception was? Uh, you have good perception. I need. I think okay, I need so to. Is mine. So either one of you, because my you perception not so great. I think I see. Come in. Also got front. Okay, um, so Tits and Torrin jumping in the front, everyone else jumping in the back. Um, Leaf's kind of marked her territory and kind of spread out everywhere. You just give her a, a gentle kick <laughs> to the side, um, force her to kind of sit up a little bit. Um, so you've got some space okay. to sit down there as well. Um, you head off um, gently enough uh, in, onto the main road and out of the city um, to the, let me see, to the west. Um, there's a nice clear, it clears up a little bit as you head away from the city there's not quite so much cloud cover um, mm -hmm. and um, you don't really seem to come across anyone coming into the city even though it is like a main kind of trade route 
Um, it is going along past the sea. Um, so if you mm-hmm. look on the, the map that I sent you out that you bought last week, um, mm-hmm. there's like you kind of see the flower fields. Mm-hmm. Um, this is more towards like the, the west side of the map. You see like a white pathway going out. So it's that pathway that you're going along there that Harry's farm is on. And um, you head off mm-hmm. out that way towards um, the main road. Um, so going along the main road itself, um, you do kind of have to double back a little bit um, on to the main trade road. You go along the, um, you kind of see like some posts going up with some signs that say King's Road on it. Um, and you double back a little bit and cut off of the, the King's Road to go on to um, what it points you towards as being the trade route um, mm-hmm. to head down towards Dremont, um away from the sea. Um, I'm just kind of trying to keep my eyes on any low-lying shrubberies along the side of the road, anyone who might be trying to peek out along the edges. Okay. Um, actively doing this, make a, a um, perception check for me. Come on, little mini dice, do me good. Ah! <laughs> no, that's good. <laughs> Uh, 19. 19. Okay. Um, looking out along, by the time you, you get started off in the morning, left the tavern and got to Harry's, it was closer to 11 o'clock that you managed to get onto the main road. Um, Travelling along it for a couple of hours, um, it gets to like maybe what you could what you imagine to be about like 3 o'clock in the afternoon, um, when you do kind of see some rustling um, in some of the the shrubs and the trees. Um, you also see a little bit further up the way, um, there is um, what looks to be a campfire. doesn't have a fire going in it at the moment. It doesn't seem like there's any smoke or anything like that coming out, but it is a, a um, campfire area um, with a few kind of stone outcroppings. Slow down. Okay. Back on the reins a little bit. Okay. Take the horses down to a slower pace. Okay. So slowing down, um, the horses just start going along a little bit slower. You come up towards the um, campfire area um, and you see scattered around there are a few pieces of cloth um, that are kind of just scattered around in that area. And I'm going to knock behind me or, or speak behind me to let the people in back know that uh, we've come up on on a camp. Okay. Do you need, is everything okay? Do we need to get weapons ready or? I don't see anything yet. Um, but I'm going to, I'm going to hop down off the, off the cart. I'm going to go ahead and stop the cart. Okay. So Um, I'm going to look around again, just to make, to see if I see any active movement or if the campsite looks abandoned. Okay. Um, make, a, make another perception check down for me. Um, now that you're a little bit closer. 15. 15, okay. Um, the rustling itself, you can kind of hear it. Um, it's not quite as noticeable. Um, but looking around, you do see or hear some rustling on the other side as well of the road that you're on. Mm. I am. Um, and I'll step out with you. Hey, River. Hmm. <laughs> yes. You're. You are of the stealthy genre. <laughs> Sometimes. So there's the abandoned camp on this side, but I keep hearing sounds on the other side. Do you want to flank around? Yeah. yeah. And we can kind of. Yeah. See what's going on over there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So if I'm going to the other side, I'm going to stay in the cart, but like near the end, looking like just basically straight ahead, just to see if there's anything like at the back. Okay. So I'm going to flank or whatever, kind of take a wide berth around, sneak around stealthily. Okay. Um, So going around, um, make, um, go ahead and make a perception check, see if you see anything. That's not. (laughs) <laughs> 12 oh no oh that could have been so much worse though <laughs> ok 
Okay, and so sneaking around, um, kind of looking, you do see um, there is um, a boot, like a sole of a boot that you can kind of see poking out of one of the bushes. Can I sneak up behind said boot? <laughs> it's a tiny boot. <laughs> Well, um, she's a cat. It looks <laughs> um, humanoid sized a bit. Can I sneak up behind them? Yeah, um, make a stealth check. Three. A three. <clears throat> 23, no, 23. I was like, three? <laughs> <laughs> That's not where you want the time to cut out. Okay. <laughs> 23. <laughs> Um, easy enough to, to kind of sneak up. You go very slowly, managing to avoid any little twigs or branches um, or little stones that you could potentially kick. Um, and you see um, the boot kind of move in quickly, um, as if they're trying, um, the boot's being moved back. <laughs> so I... Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Take my dagger. Mm-hmm get up behind them and just put it to the back and say what are you doing okay um so do i need to roll a perception check to see if there's anything directly like no no um so putting the dagger up to the back you kind of you see the rustling stop um and someone kind of sits up briefly um and you see a human um, who is dressed in some kind of crude um, leather armour and it's not in the best condition um, and they do have like a kind of um, long scraggly hair and they, they've got a big scar um, across their face um, as if they've been kind of raped by something. They kind of stand up and like put their hands up to show they're not like holding anything um, and when they do that, they you hear them go, um, and um, need everyone to roll initiative. <laughs> 20! Fourteen. Twelve. Oh wait. Okay. So let me roll real quick. Fifteen. Do I get a surprise attack on this dude person? Um, it should be very proper to tell you what your initiative is. Like um, any type of opportunity. Yeah. yeah. It's any vaccine. Right. Oh, but you need that sniping. I don't yeah. remember how I'm doing. Well, Twenty. Which is nice. Which is nice. But it doesn't mean anything on your fish. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I rolled a nat 20, but it, it doesn't really mean anything. And I I have a, a minus one. I have a minus one because even though I'm very strong, I am not very dexterous. Um, so we'll do um, 25 to 20. Nobody? Nobody. Um, 20 to 15. 16. 16 for me. I have a 19. 19. Okay. 19. Okay. So, so 19 for Torin. Mm-hmm. 15 for me. 15 for Tex. This. What was it you got there, River? 16. 16. Anyone else in the 20 to 15? 15. 15 for you? Mika, was that? 15, okay. I got 12. Okay. <laughs> um. Okay. Um. Who has the higher decks between you, Tex and Mika? Uh, my deck is fifteen. <laughs> Mine's fifteen too. <laughs> Okay, so you can can you, you can just decide who's gonna go first. Okay, <laughs> you can roll for it. 
I have these new two-sided little flippy Kraken. Okay. Kraken or one? Kraken or one? Okay. So, so flip and see who goes first then. Do you want Kraken or one, Mika? Uh, one. Okay. You go first. Mika goes first. Yay. Okay. <laughs> okay, so let's see here. I stick it up on my tracker. Seeing as I have my special magnetic one. <laughs> so we're going Torin first. So let's see. Um, oh, yeah. It's a D8 rolling time. Won't be too long. easy. Okay, so I'm gonna put it all onto Owl Bear now so that you can all yep. see what's going on. Um, I don't have the cart on it but we'll say the cart is like just kind of right beside the campfire. Um, so Leaf you cool. are on the cart still. Um, mm -hmm. Let me see here. I believe the only people that left the cart was Tick the River. Yeah. 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 Okay. And I'm behind a bush. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. And I'm still sitting on the cart. Yep. Yeah. yeah, everyone but me and River are yeah. on the cart still. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Jumping all over the place on us tonight. Um yep. so Tex, you're kind of over investigating here. And River, you're over investigating here. So I've got one guy here. Um, uh, I've got another one up here. Um, and I've got another one here. So let me just name these real quick. Just so I know who's who. Okay. So Torin, you are up first. All right. Well, I have to step down from the cart. Okay. And then, uh, let's see. River has control over our first... And we're behind a bus. I don't know if you'd even see us. Oh, you're behind the cart. Yeah, we're, like, behind... Right, VM, you said we're behind a bush? Yeah, so you were over here. Um, a, a kind of small bush area that's a little bit in from the tree um but the the bandit that you saw there has kind of stood up um so they are in full view and they have their hands up okay so oh, they've got their hands up yeah yeah and river's got the one dude over there yeah and where are you i'm by the fire pit okay and then I'm also by the fire pit, basically. Yeah, you're in the road. I'm the I'm this one over here. For some reason, there's no. And I don't know very well. What did they say when we said run? Uh, he he whistled the one that you yeah. have ever like whistled or something, right? Yeah, he whistled cool, cool. a little bit in warning. Um, and then the other two, um, one of them pops out from the tree, um, where you heard the other rustling, um, and the there's someone now standing on top of one of the large stone. Um, kind of outcroppings just up on top of the stone. Um, the one that's standing up on top of the stone, um, he um, is a, an orc, um, a full, full orc, um, so fully green, um, is dressed in slightly nicer looking leather armour. Um, it appears to be like a captain um, as well as two like underling bandits. <laughs> Do we have bandits and okay? So we have banded outlaws. Okay. <clears throat> and just yeah, you're first. No mind. Go. Never mind. I'll ask when I get there. <laughs> okay. So um, so the orc is based on this map. Um, he's kind of up on a rock. Yeah, yeah, he's up on the rock. Okay. Um. 
kind of want to shoot him with an arrow. So shoot him with an arrow. But uh, I'm concerned about the TV down here, too. You guys are. So, I mean, an arrow's not my best weapon, but let's see what I got. Um, against the <clears throat> captain. Um, yeah, it should be within range. That's, that's about 30 feet, so, so you should be in range there. It's 30 feet? Yeah. Like, if you're shooting him with an arrow. Yeah, 100, 400, 100 for my crossbow. Um, but it seems like I've got more with my javelin. Go I'm going to take my javelin and uh, aim it towards him and just right up there. Okay. Um, go ahead and roll an attack. See if you hit first. And that's a 13. Plus 13. Okay. Um, plus. Yeah. What? Your attack bonus. With your javelin. Oh, yeah. Plus 7. Okay. 7. So 20. 20 hits. Go ahead and roll damage. Not with a d20. I'm pretty sure oh, your wait. javelin doesn't do d20. No, it doesn't. 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 6 plus 5, so 11. 11, okay. Let's see here. Oh, for some reason, you're not working. That's right, 1 plus 5. Oh, I'm one. sorry. Six. I thought it was plus... 1d6, you rolled a 1. Plus one. 5 is 6. 6, sorry. <laughs> 6. <laughs> 6. 6. 6. six, six, damage, six so. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. No, it's fine. Um, are you <laughs> wanting to move any, or do you want to stay there? Um, I am going to stay there. Stay there. Okay. Um, so River, you're up next. Okay. So, do I get, uh, on it, or the sneak attack? Being as I'm this close, or no? Um, let me double check. I haven't looked at um, the attack stuff for you in about two weeks, so... You don't need advantage on the attack roll of the other enemy, but there's, like, you get it... Yeah, let me, let me double check. Where are we? Or ranged weapon. If you have an advantage on the attack roll. Or do I have an advantage on the attack roll? For this one, um, because they don't have um, any weapon on them, and you're kind of at their behind with the dagger already, I'll, I'll say you have advantage on this one. Okay. All right. So, roll to see if I can. Where's my little damage dice? I think that's a 19. 19? Uh, that, that hits. Yeah. Yeah. Plus whatever. Yeah. All right. And that hits. <sighs> Are you attacking Four. just with the dagger? Yeah, just with the dagger. Okay. So it's a D one D four. So that's four points. Of that plus five. So nine, nine. plus the two D six for sneak attack. So six. So nine. Fifteen points. Fifteen points. And I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the, the, the hilt part and like just hit him in the head. Okay. Um easy enough to do. You, um quickly um flip the dagger around, grab it um by the hilt, smack him over the head, um and he instantly crumples to the ground. Um you've easily Bye. taken him out. Bye. Um, and then I'm going to mm -hmm. Take my boost, boots of haste. The zero is a ten. Click them to get. Oh, I can't because that's a bonus action. No, I'm just going to use my <laughs> regular movement. Mm -hmm. Actually, because I can use feline agility. Yeah. Once a turn. So I'll, I'll do 60 feet of Right? Because I have 30 feet of movement normally. So 60 feet. And I get to. Um, 
somewhere kind of near uh, the cart. Um, I'm still on the side that I'm on. Um, where else okay. are you trying to go to? Um, you, you can move your character as well, remember. Yeah, yeah. The part where everyone's standing right now. Okay, so just kind of to the, the main road area? Like Here-ish, behind the cart. And then so, use my bonus action to hide yeah. behind the cart. Um, go ahead and make a stealth roll. Stealth check. Okay. <laughs> That's a one. <laughs> So, so you're going over with my with my self. That's an eight. <laughs> okay. Uh, so going over, nah, um, nah. the car itself yep. is quite large and um, tall and um, with the wheels on it. Um, but um, with the the car itself, um, it is quite high off the ground with the wheels. So even ducking down, um your tail kind of still whips out behind it in a curl so they can still see your tail um so you don't feel very well hidden at all at this kind of area yeah mm -hmm. okay is that your that's, that's it that's all i got okay mika you're up oh wait can i yell and just say ambush okay um yeah it's easy enough to do ambush. sorry it's a cool from something it's an ambush! <laughs> oh no! Um, I'm going to have a look around outside and see the two um, bandits. Yep. How far away are both of them from the car? Um, both of them are 30 feet, I would say. Okay. The one up on the rock is um, 30 feet but at a diagonal up onto the rock itself. I'm going to throw an ice knife at the one, the, not the one on the rock, the other one. So the, the one down here, okay. Um, do you yeah. see the ice knife? Mika's just all quiet and then all of a sudden yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's always the I quiet ones. Ice knife. Where is ice knife? I can't find ice knife for some reason. Oh, I should have it um, on my phone. Let me see here. Ice knife. First or second level. Yeah. I'll do a first level one. I just need a drop of water. So I'm assuming we've got like yeah. bo not bottles, like water skins in the cart. Yeah. Um with with there being like kind of the rain the day before as well, um I'd say there's like kinda of little puddle like little tiny pockets of mud puddles about <laughs> as well. So there is still still water on the ground. Um <laughs> Let me see. Uh, so the ice knife is uh, on a hit. The target takes one d10 piercing damage, hit or miss the shard that explodes. The target and each creature within five feet of the point where the ice exploded must succeed on a dexterity saving throw or take two d6 cold damage. Okay. Um. So what's the the DC there? Um. Dex save. What's the the save on it? A um, thirteen. A thirteen. Okay. Yeah. That's an 8 plus, let's see, where are you? That is a 9, so they fail on that one. Woohoo! Go ahead and roll damage. Oh, which one is it? Which one? 1d6. Oh no, 1d6. Is it 1d6? No, no, uh, it's 1d10. Sorry. Oh no, wait, wait, wait. Um, if you're doing it first, um, the target takes one ten. It's yeah, um, one d ten two. piercing damage. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's seven. Seven damage. Okay. Seven. 
Okay. Um, with that, the ice knife kind of blasts into him and kind of like explodes a little bit. Um, you can see him like stumble back a bit um, and drop down to one knee and just with the sheer impact of it. Um, he's looking really quite hurt um, by this ice knife that you've, even though you're quiet, um, you're vengeful as hell. Mm. <laughs> oh, yeah. How close am I to the guy who just got ice knifed? Um, <laughs> you're I mean, about you probably 15 feet away, so, so you're fine. All right, I just want to move five ish feet closer to him so that I am within 10 feet. Uh, so that would be there. <laughs> and just for funsies, mm -hmm. I'm going to whip out the whip of domination. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Because I want to know what the fuck these guys are up to. I want to know if they've seen anything. So I'm kind of hoping maybe we can yep. get this guy wounded but alive. So um, <laughs> without the whip of domination. Okay. Well, let me check. That wow. was, uh, that's um, he has to make, I, I roll for attack. He has to make a DC 15 uh, strength check strength. or he is wrapped in vines and is grappled. Awesome. Couldn't remember if it was strength or not. <laughs> Let's see. Him. The DC 15? Uh, DC 15 saving throw. Let me make sh Let me, let DC me. Uh, my oh. attack roll was a 20. It was a non-natural 20. 14 plus. That is an 11 for a strength check. So, so strength saving throw. He is grappled in my whip of domination. <laughs> <laughs> so let me write right here. Grappled. I guess have a bad day. <laughs> bad day. Um, we are going to put him as yellow for nice. grappled. Okay. Yellow for and then grappled. <laughs> okay. So he's kind of down on one knee. He's just been blasted in the chest. Um, and next thing he's you know, he's just randomly her. got these veins grasping around him, just holding him in place. Um, with all this ice kind of sticking out of his chest from the ice knife. Is that your turn? Um, I want to look at look at him in the eyes, and I want to turn my eyes uh to pupilless and red. Okay. And <laughs> this guy doesn't have pee going down his leg. Okay. <laughs> Me can intimidation. Are you trying to intimidate him? I am going. I am trying to intimidate him and tell him to just stay down. Okay, make an intimidation Ready? check in for me. Oh, that's not great. Uh, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that that is only a eleven. <laughs> okay. Um. So you, you flash your eyes red with no pupils, um, he looks up, um, he just looks more bewildered at the, um, this onslaught that has occurred, um, and just seems more hurt um, than frightened. Fair. <laughs> um, if okay, that's, that's the end of my turn, turn then yeah. Leaf, it's your turn, you're up. Awesome. Um, so seeing that Mika has been ice safe, uh, at one of the bandits, I'm going to scramble out of the cart and okay. I'm going to go and attack the one that's up on the the rock. Yeah, okay. So, um, you said that's 30 feet away, so would it would I get right beside him? Um, so, jumping down off the cart, um, so that'd be one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's about 35 feet because you need to jump down off the cart and go around the cart. Okay. Uh, I have 35 feet of movement. Okay. So that gets you to the base <laughs> of the rock then um, because the it's up on the, the rock. rock. Okay. Um, and from there, I'm going to... Um, right, let's see what spell I have. How much you blend into that background. <laughs> spells, 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 spells. Um, hmm. Can I 
Ooh, ooh, I don't know if this works on the the rock or the soil around it, but could I mold use my mold earth spell? Okay. Ooh. Well let me check. Mold earth. Where are we? These are all brand new. <laughs> The, is it the move earth that you're trying it's to do? It's mold earth and it says you can use a portion of dirt or stone yeah. that you can see within a range and that fits within a five foot cube. You manipulate it in one of the following ways. If you target an area of loose earth, you can instantaneously excavate it, move it along the ground and deposit it up to five feet away. Mm -hmm. This movement doesn't have enough force to cause damage. You can you cause shapes, colours or both to appear on the dirt or stone, spelling out words, creating mm -hmm. images or shaping patterns. The changes last for one hour. If the dirt or stone you target is on the ground, you cause it to become difficult terrain. Alternatively, you can cause the ground to become normal terrain if it is already difficult terrain. This change lasts for yeah. one hour. If you cast this spell multiple times, you can have no more than two of its non-instantaneous effects effective at a time and you can dismiss such an effect as an action. No problem. Um, so what is it you're trying to do with the, the earth or stone? Um, I was going to make it kind of like shake underneath him. Kind of like an earthquake. If I'm able to. <laughs> um, <laughs> like knock him off balance? or Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kind of like, spell... like an earthquake to make him like fall um, or something. With that there, um, you would really only be able to like either like move some of the stone away or some of the dirt away. Um, like kind of create something like written out or a shape on this stone or the dirt or just turn it into difficult terrain. You wouldn't really like, be able to use um, that kind of effect probably take a bit of the stone out from underneath him okay um so five foot <coughs> cube there um yep. take, take a little bit of a, a chunk of a stone away um kind of underneath his feet um because it's disappearing suddenly i'm going to make him just do a a dex check here an acrobatics yeah. check um that is a five, so he falls down um, yes. to the ground. It's not um, a very high outcropping, but you've managed to make him fall fall off of the, the rock and down onto the ground. Cool. You're me. Uh, so that was one of my turns, so do I get another yeah. turn? So you, that was a cantrip. You can cast a spell um, if you'd like to cast a spell or use um, attack with a weapon. Yeah, I'm going to attack with a weapon, so I'm going to make my attack. That is a 19. That hits. Go ahead and roll damage. Yes. Cool, cool. So I'm going to be using uh, my long sword and I'm going to... Uh, let's go for it. Uh, that is uh, 8 plus 5, so 13. 13 damage, okay. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Um, oh, hey, DM, I, I just realized that when I got dude with Whip of Domination, I didn't actually roll damage, because it does do okay. damage as well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> go ahead and roll, roll some damage on that, then. Uh, uh, six. Six, okay. Points of slashing damage. Cool. Six points of damage. He... Underneath this, um, you strike him with the whip um, retroactively while this is going on with the other guy. Strike him with the whip um, and <laughs> yeah, it kind of it. cuts in a little bit um, into his arms and you just see him fall unconscious with his head lolling off to the side. Cool. Can I describe what happens with the guy that I've just attacked? Sure. <laughs> oh. um, so as uh, he tumbles to the floor and um, to the ground, I bring out my long sword and I go, "You're not going to get away that easy." And then I'm going to slash and take the sword and like 
swing it and slash him right down, like, fr- like from his shoulder right through, like, to his other side. Okay. Awesome. So you kind of slash, you hit him in, on the shoulder as he's fallen down. Um, you, it does cut into his shoulder. Um, you pull it back and there's a large gash kind of at his shoulder going down the way. Okay. Cool. That I don't know if that's my thing, that's my turn over. I don't think I can do okay. any more. It is now <laughs> the captain's turn. Dun dun dun! He's going to use half his movement to stand up. <gasps> um, and he is going to do um, a multi attack. Um, just against you, Leaf, because you're right there. Um, so he's yep. going to do um, two attacks with his scimitar and then one with his dagger. So, first attack is a 14 to hit. Uh, I'm a 15. Okay, so it doesn't hit. Um, he slices at you as he's standing up. Um, he managed to dodge out of the way. Next one is a 9 to hit. Nope. Okay. Um, so he slices again. You managed to just duck out the other way. I'm swapping dice. Yeah. <laughs> no, we we'll use this one. Um, and he's just going to throw it, like, trying to hit you with that. It's not working. He's just going to pull a dagger out at his side and um, just try and slash at you with the dagger. That is an 18 to hit. Yeah, that's hit. Okay. So that is one plus three. That is um four points of piercing damage. Um, okay. So as he's slashing away his sword, um, you're kind of ducking out the way. He grabs his dagger out and he um stabs it into yeah. your, the side of your leg. Okay. And pulls it back out. Four points of damage. Okay and. Cool. Um, he's just going to stay there. Okay, so that's oh. us now back around at top, so tour in Europe. Okay. So, how far am I from him at this point? Um, you're about 25 feet from him now, um, now that he's jumped in off the rock. Um, I want to move in to get into melee, uh, Range. So, so jumping down off the car, um, easy enough to get there with your movement. Flank, flank, flank. Flank, flank, flank. There we go. Yeah. Where else do you want to go? Do you want to flank? Yeah, I can flank him. Okay, flank. Um, what is your movement? Again? Mm-hmm. 30 feet. 30, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You can, you can just get around there to flank him around the other side. Yeah, good. And then um, I'm going to go ahead and take my great sword mm-hmm. and with Thunder Smite. Okay. Thunder okay. Smite. Um, go I'm going to go ahead and come okay. down on him. Okay, go ahead and roll, um, roll an attack for that, I believe it is. Alright, so with the great sword. Roll your d20. Roll your for attack. Oh, for attack first. Yeah. There we go. Uh. Whoa. It's a 9 plus... It's a 9 plus... What? Plus... 10. 16. 16 hits. Go ahead and roll damage. Okay. And then 1d6. For the grit sword. 5 plus 5, so... 5 plus... 5. 5. Oh, 2d6. It's, it's 2. Right, it's 2d6. 5. 9 plus 5. 14. On the, with the great sword, and then with thunderous smite. Oh, wait. Sorry, give me a second. That's okay. Do anywhere to mine. Thunderous smite. Uh, ba 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 ba. So the. 
Um, for the spell's duration, my weapon rings with thunder that is audible within 300 feet of me, mm -hmm. and the attack deals an extra 2d6 thunder damage to the ta target. Okay. So, there's 2, 4. 4 points thunder damage. So, 14 plus 4, so 18 total? Yeah. 18 total, okay. yeah. Okay, so you, you uh, hear your sword up if and you, you slash away, um, bringing it down. Um, when you heave it up, you hear... <laughs> and you just hear thunder um, off in the distance, just coming in even closer. As you bring it down, there's a loud clap of thunder as you hit him. Um, slicing into his torso area as you bring it down with the tip, just like dragging um, and cutting across his armour. Okay, and is he considered a creature as an orc? Um, no. Uh, as an orc? Okay. Let me see. Let me double check. Hold on. I just want to hear it. Let me Let me check. I think it is. Um... Or it could be a humanoid, so not a creature. Okay. Well, fortunate for him. <laughs> <laughs> he feels not very fortunate in this time. <laughs> Believe me, it could have been worse. Yeah. <laughs> I'll um, drop it gone. Like, have we taken it over too? So, um, is that your turn, Doran? Uh, I believe that's that is my turn. I'm not. Okay. I'm not worried about leaving him. Uh, I'm fine right right now. Okay. Awesome. Remember and I don't think I have any bonus action. That was my bonus action once the thunder since my <laughs> Awesome. River, you're up. And that lasts uh, for a minute, right? So you have it for your next attack too. And you so I'm gonna click the boots I don't need to click the boots. Um Yeah, you're yeah. probably only about thirty feet from I'm just saying I'm, Yeah, I'm just gonna use my short bow and take out an arrow and beep. Okay, go ahead and roll an attack. Oh gosh, please don't hit us. <laughs> pew pew! 13 plus, hold on. Crap. Uh, seven situation, right? Yeah. 20. Yep, um, <coughs> that definitely hits, so go ahead and roll damage for that one. Alright, so one, two, five. <laughs> that sucked. <laughs> uh, seven points. Seven points, okay. Um, so you go ahead, you fire your, take out your cross, uh, your uh, short bow and an arrow, notch it up, let it loose. Um, it strikes him in the shoulder and he kind of it goes back a little bit um, from the impact of it and kind of bashes his shoulder um, off of the rock. Um, as he does. Um, and as my bonus action, mm -hmm. can, is it my bonus action? Yeah. And I just be like, you're outnumbered and the rest of your men are down. You might want to think about giving up. Kind of just snarls and goes, <laughs> never. And kind of like writes himself back up as he um, impacts oh, off of the rock. Is that your turn? Um, I will. One guy left. Can I use my movement to kind of go back to the guy that I knocked out? Because I'm going to tie him up when I get the chance. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, no problem. Oh, um, easy enough to move back there. Um, can't tie him up quite yet. Um, that would be an yeah, action to yeah, do yeah. so. Um, but you're able to move back there easily enough. Okay. okay. Mika, you're up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So, just this last one left. Yeah. Mhm. Mm. What shall I hit him with? Mm. He was trying to hit first. Mm -hmm. Roll to see if you hit first. <laughs> <laughs> Good 
good plan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what are you hitting him with first? What, what are you using? I'm gonna go with another ice knife. Okay. Because that was 14 plus 5, so that's 19 to hit. Okay. And then it's a D10 again. Yep, um, so what was the save on it? Um, it was a DC 15, wasn't it? Uh, 13. 13, okay. Rolls in 19. I think that's just if it, it doesn't... Yes. Uh, I think that's just if it doesn't hit. But yeah. they have to succeed on the dexterity yeah. saving throw. Yeah, so mm. he ro rolled a 19 plus 3, so he rolled a um, 22, so he manages to make a save. Um, so go ahead and... Um, he will roll... Um, another dex save. Um, Leaf and Torin, you also need to roll a deck save. Good. Oh, good times. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Dexterity saving throw. You have to roll a deck save. Okay. Let's see what I got there. Dexterity saving throw. But you gotta roll your D20. That would be a 12. A 12? Okay. So that's a failure yeah. with a. 13. I have a 12 plus well, minus 1, so it's 11. Okay. Well, so you were the worried about ice knife you. comes straight towards um, the captain, um, and the, he manages to kind of move out of the way of the initial knife going into him. Um, misses him, so he manages to just get off to the side, um, but the ice knife explodes, capturing. Um, Leaf and Torrent in it as the captain just ducks straight down to the ground to avoid it. Um, so Leaf and Torrent, um, you're going to take some damage. So Mika, roll oh, 2d6. No. Oh, are you ready? <laughs> are they frozen in place though, as well, or no? Just take damage. It's just damage. Yeah. You don't Five for one of you. Okay. And... Or for the other. I'll take the four because I'm already four down anyway. <laughs> so you have to take five points of damage. Sorry. Okay, so the, okay, the ice I'll knife you just know. explodes, capturing you both in it. It sprays you both in the face, cutting at your faces um, and dealing damage to you both. Come on, man. Removing, removing five. You got hit by the ice knife. There we go. <laughs> Not 50. Yeah, Mika, what were you throwing that thing? Yeah. There. there we go. Gosh. Okay. Um, Zit, you no, have anything else you wanted to do there, Mika? Um, I think I've done enough damage for now. <laughs> 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 okay, Tex, you're up. Look, it was hot outside. Just cool them off. It's fine. <laughs> You're right. It's fine. <laughs> so, dude, who's wrapped in my whip um, and unconscious? Yeah. I want to see if he's like, is he just unconscious or is he dead? So, um, with the ice knife as well as being grappled, he's he's out completely. Um, so he's he's not like he's just gone, unconscious. Though. He's just like not breathing or anything like that. He's dead, though. So. Okay, so I am gonna yank back my whip, put it back on my hip, okay. and doing so, he kind of falls uh, off to the ground and just like, like slumps awkwardly. So I'm like what twenty feet away from from where the fight is happening, ish. I would say 20, 20, 25 feet. Yeah. Okay, so I am going to head just. Don't move the whole screen, just move me. Okay. But then we me. Anyway. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna run up there and join in the fun. Okay. Go ahead and roll time. Oh no, I'm not. <laughs> 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 
big Goliath dice did you bad? It did me bad. I just rolled a two. <laughs> oh no. It's not gonna hit shit. Running up, you slash away, but um, he's still um, dropped down a little bit from trying to avoid the ice knife and the blast from the ice knife. Um, so you just swipe at um, air. Oh, man. Managing to just <laughs> avoid your party members. You know, that, at least I didn't roll a one. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything else you wanted to do there? Um... You know what? Just for shoots and giggles, because I haven't actually done it yet. Uh-huh. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna use my action surge. Okay. And I'm gonna attack him again, and I'm not rolling the giant dice because that <laughs> that fucked me. Let's try. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see how Vex is treating me today. <laughs> my great sword that's 13 13 misses um you take another yeah. swipe um but he's still kind of lowered down he just kind of ducks down a little bit and avoids your blade um just kind of glances over like with maybe an inch um above his head damn okay okay um leaf you're up go oh. uh huffing and hawing from being like stabbed i'm gonna like <laughs> basically like You'll, you'll pay for that, and also you'll pay for that, Mika. <laughs> okay, so, right? <laughs> so I'm gonna attack him again with my long, uh, with my uh, is it a long sword or short sword? Thank long you. sword. Okay. Go ahead and roll for an attack. Let's roll for an attack. <laughs> that would be a eighteen. 18 hits, go ahead and roll damage. Just awesome. And that is a 15 plus 5, so that's 20 to damage. 20? Okay. Yeah. And I'm basically just going to go with my longsword and slash him again. Okay, go ahead and roll for that then. Oh, but I have... What did you roll on that one? <laughs> I rolled a, a 50. I got up 20 for that. 20 damage. Okay, did you roll for the attack? Or did you just roll that? Yes. So, so what was the attack roll? The 18. Attack? 18, okay. Yeah. Um, And what was the damage on it? And the damage was... um, a f It was 15 plus 5. Okay, 20. 20. So 20. Okay, so you... um. Bring out your sword and you slash away again. Um, take him out. Nice! <laughs> so when I slash him with my long sword, he just, he basically like severs in two. And then like his body like falls on the floor. And I go, <laughs> and that's how it's done. Okay. So you, you bring up your sword, you slash, um, hacking into the shoulder that you'd already cut into and um, with the strength you put behind it, you manage to um, sever right the way down to like, kind of the middle of his chest, um, pull your sword back out um, and he kind of just falls back into the rock um, and slumps down with blood just pulling underneath him from this massive, massive gash that nobody could survive um, going right the way through him. Yes. Awesome! <laughs> I'm going to tie up my guy. Okay. Um, <laughs> easy enough to do. Um, to tie him up. And search him. And search him. Okay. Um, go ahead and make an investigation check. Four. Okay. Four? Um, 24. 24, sorry. Um, 24. So, Roll a 19. Awesome. Looking around on him, um, you do find um, one silver piece and about 15 copper. Um, and he does have a um, rusty scimitar at his side, um, as well as a crossbow that seem, a light crossbow that seem better days. How many copper? Um, 15 copper. So one silver, 15 copper. And then, is that a light scimitar? 
Yeah, um, a, a rusty, rust, rusty scimitar <laughs> and a light crossbow. Um, those were the two weapons that he had on him. I'm gonna run back to the the cart and get in and just like bandage up my, my scratch. That went. Well, if you're running away, I'm gonna loot this guy. Okay. <laughs> um, make an investigation check there for that one. <laughs> I'll share. I'm good. I'm. My. Uh. Hold on. Hold on. You better share because I technically killed him. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. I think that should be a thing. If you kill him, you loot him. Fourteen. Fourteen. Hey, I didn't um, shoot. Ran away. I know. No, we're good here. Future, future. This is an investigation shoot. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, easy enough to to kind of loot the body. I mean, there's nothing there preventing you from doing it. Um, you do find um. He's got seven gold on him in a in a small pouch at his side. Um, he does have on a kind of crude metal ring. Um, that's kind of just made of like um, like um, kind of base metal. Um, so it's probably not worth too much. But he does have twenty foot of rope at his side as well, as um, oh. a scimitar and a was that a scimitar? Yeah, a scimitar and a dagger. Oh, cool. Um, Know, of which are kind some of weapons rusty applies. a little bit, um, but they're not like too too kind of rusted over, so so they are both cool. serviceable. Um, There's still the one other guy to loot too, the one I had in my whip. Mm -hmm. I'm just literally yeah. gonna be like in the cart, just like resting because of my wounds. Okay. I uh, bring over the guy I tied up. Okay. Is he alive okay. enough? Like, um, he's still kind of passed out, um, but he is kind of starting to move about a little bit, um, starting to stir a little bit there. Cool. I take my my uh, claw mm -hmm. and just kind of like scratch his head a little, like you know, wakey wakey. <laughs> um, without doing like any damage to him or anything like that, yeah. um, or like a he does kind of come to stirring a little tiny bit. Um, and kind of starts to open his eyes up a little bit, um, but closing them um, with the light coming in and kind of just groaning a little bit like, ugh. <laughs> Bad day. Yeah. Um, Bad day. Aww. You were going to say something? Oh, I was going to, I mean, we probably loot the other dude. Loot the other dude? But group? I was just... Okay. Um, so going, 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 going to the... Um, the other one there that um, Tix was grappling, um, he is completely out of it as well. Um, he's got um, <laughs> two silver on him and five copper, as well as another scimitar. That is all rusted over as well. There was five gold on the orc, right? Um, on the orc, there's seven, seven, seven gold on that one. Seven gold. Two silver and five copper on this one? Yeah. <laughs> And a uh, rusty scimitar. Cool. And then, what about the campsite? The campsite itself. Um, you go over. Um, it looks as though it's just kind of there to almost be like a, tra a trap. Um, they've just like kind of mussed some some old clothing around um, and blankets and whatnot to try and draw some people in so then they can get a get a surprise attack on them. Mm -hmm. um, so there's not really anything there of of value or anything like that to. To salvage, as everything's kind of all all tattered and whatnot, to make it look as though they've been attacked. <laughs> cool. It's a holy thought. Uh, I have so. got to head now. Okay. Um. So, good news is that that's where we're going to anyway for the, uh, this one. So oh, finishing awesome. <laughs> this one. Um. And going ahead and looking look at the um the bandits. You managed to load the bandit that you have um tied up onto the back of the cart. Um, you all moved back up there um, to move on towards your your destination with this um, bandit in the back. So that's where. Can I just say that we took the two bodies and kind of drug them off into the woods? Okay. Okay. Um, easy enough to do. Yeah. Side of the road. Easy enough to do just to bring it um, a couple of feet the into the, the kind of wooded area, and so they're all covered by the shrubs. That's easy enough to do. Um, <laughs> with, with the campsite still left there for 
for any travellers who may, may wish to come along in the future and make a camp there. Um, so that's where we'll go ahead and end the session for today then. Have we done XP yet? We're not doing XP. No, we're not doing XP. No. Uh. So you'll just tell us <laughs> You'll just tell us when we magically like level up. Level up. Level up. I'm hoping maybe it's after the goblins, yeah? I'm not <laughs> saying the day of goblins. <laughs> Well, thanks for a great game. No problem. Bye. See you next Bye. week. Bye. See ya.